Gene Sarazen was first, then Ben Hogan, Gary Player, and Jack Nicholas. In the black and white world of the 1930s, Sarazen, wearing the plus four knickers of the time, completed the modern Grand Slam by winning a new tournament called the Masters. The taciturn hawk, Ben Hogan, wrapped up his slam in his only British Open appearance in the chill of Carnoustie in 1953. The Scots called him the wee Iceman. The third to turn the trick was little Gary Player of South Africa as he won the US Open in 1965. Jack Nicholas did the Grand Slam three times, completing the trio here at St. Andrews to cap golf's greatest career. And now the new millennium starts with a new kind of golfer trying to join the historic quartet. He makes his bid for his first here at St. Andrews, just as Jack did for his third. In 1997, Tiger Woods, at age 21, left his elders far in his wake, winning by a record 12 shots in the hallowed Masters at Augusta. The PGA Championship last year was no cakewalk. Challenged by a golfer even younger than he, he edged out Spain's Sergio Garcia by a single shot, emotionally drained at the end. And just last month, on the storied fairways of Pebble Beach, he left writers searching for new adjectives, winning the United States Open by 15 shots, not even the great Nicholas ever dominated so completely. Now 6,000 miles from Pebble, one trophy remains. Here at the Old Lakes, where Mary Queen of Scots played long centuries ago, the child prodigy grown into a mature man faces the old lady, as St. Andrews is called, hoping that she will be kind, that she'll let him avoid the devilish bunkers and the capricious bounces, and will let him walk the Swilkin Bridge to victory in the British Open. ABC Sports and the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews welcome you to final round coverage of the 129th British Open presented by MasterCard. The clear blue skies of yesterday have given way to an uncertain mix of clouds and bright intervals at St. Andrews. Breeze has become a wind, not a real stem winder, like can happen here on the old course, but more of an up and down, unpredictable sort of thing. The crowd, some of whom were shirtless yesterday, are zipped into their anoraks this afternoon at just after two Scottish summertime. It's as capricious as only the British Open can get. So for the story, here's my ABC colleague, Mike Tirico. Thank you, Jim McKay, and we're so glad to have you with us on Championship Sunday at the Open Championship. Tiger Woods arriving and working his way over to the practice facility to warm up for his tee time, which is in... 37 minutes, 2.40 local time. Here are the last five groups. Steve Flesh, the American, Ernie Elts, the runner-up in the first two majors. They have just teed off of number one. Tom Lehman and Dennis Paulson. Lehman, the past champ in the Open Championship. Paulson, his best major ever. These players tied for seventh. Lauren Roberts and David Toms are in a three-way tie for fourth. Roberts has had two top tens in majors already this year. Darren Clark has had Sunday experience towards the end of the field in the open. Think back to Troon in 97, and Thomas Bjorn the Dane played in the third round final group with Tiger Woods and had a tough time. We'll see how he does. Tied for second with the world number two, David Duval. It's Woods and Duval in the final group. They tee off at 2.40 local time or 9.40 Eastern. The other groups are already out on the golf course, and some early moves have been made by a couple of big-name players. Davis Love, six under for the day. He's at eight under for the championship. VJ Singh at five under for the day, also at eight under. Azinger just gave one back. Paul shot 30 on the front, including a great string of birdies from one through seven, except for the second hole. Other than those players, Monty's at three under, but there have not been many scores under par. About three or four hours ago, there was more wind, there was more cloudiness, and. It was a little tougher to get the ball near the hole, but as you look back at the field that's been out there or some players who are done, you see not a lot of tremendous moves. The Spaniards are in line. Olaf Babel, Garcia, and Jimenez, who had a very good U.S. Open. Esper Parnovic has battled through a bad hip this week. Mark O'Mara, champion in 98, survivor of the playoff with Brian Watts. Three Aussies, O'Hearn, Allenby, and Parsons. Leonard, the past champion. Jim Furyk finished with a round of 72 today. Tom Watson made the cut. Five-time Open champion. 
Lee Westwood. Disappointing 75 today, disappointing week. One of the world's top five, and that's how the field stands from beginning to end at the 129th British Open. In a matter of the next four and a half hours, someone will make that magical walk, perhaps golf's greatest, across the Swilkin Bridge, where so many past champions have come before to wait for the roaring throngs packed around the 18th in the RNA Clubhouse. Jack Nicholas in the playoff, beating Doug Sanders in 1970 and throwing the putter into the air with joy. And Jack made that magical walk again eight years later to kiss the Claret Jug. One of the great reactions in the history of the sport. 84 Seve. Champion at St. Andrews. 1990, it was Nick Faldo. Who will it be in 2000? Will it be Tiger? Will we see history at the British Open? The 129th British Open presented by MasterCard on ABC Sports. Brought to you by MasterCard, the official card of the British and Senior British Open. Lincoln, American luxury. Lucent Technologies, expect great things. And Ernst & Young, from thought to finish. Another pleasant day in the town of St. Andrews here in Scotland, the 129th Open Championship. The final round underway. The leaders tee off in about a half hour. Well, you've already heard from our host Jim McKay. This is Mike Tirico with Curtis Strange. And we are joined by the 91 British Open champion Ian Baker Finch, U.S. and British amateur champ Steve Melnick. They'll be calling the action at the holes. 1959 PGA champion Bob Rosberg. Judy Reichen, member of the World Golf Hall of Fame and one of the top 100 teachers in the land, Gary Smith. Our three on-course reporters, Carl Ravitch, has joined us all week for interviews. He'll be talking to the champion. And Frank Hannigan, former senior executive director of the USGA, here if we have any rules questions to sort out. We'll also be joined by our colleague Peter Alice a little bit later on. In all, over 150 British Opens, either broadcast or played by our group, who will describe the action on this championship Sunday. Well, the fans are sending the leaderboard message on the practice tee. Woods and Duval a half hour from getting there. But let's go over and find the fourth to last group teeing off. Tom Lehman and Dennis Paulson. Lehman at eight under par as he tees off on number one. It's our first chance to see how firm these fairways have been all week long. Watch how much this iron will roll. Actually, it hit a little bit of a soft spot. The but the Dennis Paulson. The wind in the exact same direction it has been all week long. Slightly down on the first hole. Dennis Paulson, the winner at the beginning of June at the Buick Classic in Westchester, went with a conservative shirt yesterday. He was holding out the good stuff for the final round. Yep. And Paulson, former U.S. National Long Drive champion in the uh, mid-80s, has refined his game, become a more complete player. To stand, on the la to stand on the first tee, the last round of the British Open under the RNA clubhouse is some stage. It is, look at it in the background. It's a feeling like no other place in the world. That is the home of golf, the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews. Up on the green at one, Ernie Elts for birdie. Our 18-hole leader, after shooting 66, two under the last 36 holes. Would it be possible Els could be the runner-up in a third straight major? 13. Oh, Azinger for birdie, out in 30, yes. Azinger with problems at 12, now gets it back to 9 under, and it is a spectacular setting here this morning. We were out early at a meeting, and as we're walking across the 1st uh, and 18th fairways this morning, we were commenting on how cold and windy it was, and one of the stewards happened to be there, and he says, ah, yes, an honest day. <laughs> Ernie Ells on the tee at the second, the par four, 413 yards. A bunker must be avoided from the tee there, it's called Cheap's Bunker. 16. 
Well, Davis Love fired a 74 in the first round, a 74 in the third round, 66 in the second, and he's working on another 66 today. That's about the way Davis has been playing of late, playing some brilliant golf, but inconsistent. He will string together some absolutely brilliant holes, Curtis, and then seemingly make some wayward shots, and the result bogey or worse. Out in 33, it has been a flawless round thus far for Davis. Three birdies on the front, and three coming home on the back, and 16 has been one of those holes that has given players fits this week. Only the famous road hole has yielded less birdies. It's a shot from nearly 200 yards, wind blowing from the left. Easy. You play the bounce at the old course. And you'll become familiar with those uh, dips and flips and turns that make this course so unique and so special. David Duval, six strokes behind Tiger Woods. Tiger and David teeing off in about 25 minutes. 2.40 local time. Of course, Tiger's swing coach, who's had so much success with his game and improving it, is Butch Harmon. Judy Rankin's on the practice range with Butch. Butch, you went to the practice tee last night. I saw Steve Williams leave the golf course just before 9 o'clock, and he was, his face was very tired, um, but happy. Yeah, it was a long day out there. As you know, uh, Judy, this course is as much mentally taxing as it is physically, and uh, Tiger wanted to hit some balls last night just to wind down a little and relax, and uh, really didn't need to work on anything, just to kind of get his emotions back in check. Is it the same thing this morning? And this is this is not a mechanical warm up. This is trying to find some rhythm and just kind of to make yourself ready for the day. Yeah, for me it's been a really easy week. He's uh, been in such good form and his swing has been so good. We did a little work, little work early in the week, and all I have to do now is keep saying "nice shot." A lot of players would like to be one or two shots back uh, going into a big final round, but this is a player that relishes the lead and has no fear. I agree with that, but I think you're going to see uh, Tiger play very conservative today. He doesn't need to take any chances. In reality, he's played pretty conservative all week. This is the kind of golf course that there's some holes out there that you can make birdies on, and you just hope that you take advantage of those. And then there's other holes you don't even shoot at the flags, and I think you're going to see him shoot a good conservative round today. Uh, you know, if he shoots 70, 71, someone's going to have to shoot 64 or 5, and that's not likely. You have been a most positive influence on him now since he's a teenager, and uh, this is not only a very big day for him, but you have to feel a lot of excitement yourself. I'm nervous as heck. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful to watch Tiger go from a teenager to a young man to a man, and not only in golf, but in his personal life, and it's been fun uh, to have had a little something to do with it, but I'm more nervous than he is, I think. Thanks a lot, Butch. My pleasure. I'm a little nervous too as we head back out to the second. Ernie Earls. Second shot here. Hole location just on the front. 15 paces on. Difficult hole location to get it close. Must be long if you're going to err uh, anyway. And that's pretty much what you expect at the second. It's like the first hole. You have to be up. Let's go back to the first. And the second for Tom Lehman. Flag stick only 10 over the burn, but actually it hasn't been that close to the burn all week long. Do you think it would be closer yeah. today? Absolutely. I thought it'd be four or five. It has been the closest been to the burn all week long is eight. I've seen it four or five many times. Mm -hmm. well, Layman safely beyond the flag stick. That's what most do on this opening hole. Woods and Duval tee off in 23 minutes at St. Andrews. Welcome back to the second green. Ernie Eld's putting for a birdie. He started out with a birdie at the first. Can he make it two in a row? Ernie finished second in the first two majors of the season. Lost by three to VJ Singh at the Masters and by 15 to Tiger at Pebble Beach. Ahead to 14. And Paul Azinger, third shot. 
This is not a very easy shot. He has to really throw it up in the air. Flag stick very close to the front. That really was a wonderful shot. If you can only see how steep that bank is to 15. The long par four, VJ Singh has a long birdie putt. VJ 73 yesterday, one over par. Heard any chances of uh, winning a second major this year. But the reigning Masters champ has played very well today, five under, and that was a well-judged putt at the 15th. Well, golf from this side of the Atlantic continues next weekend on ABC Sports. It's the MasterCard Senior British Open to beautiful Northern Ireland, Royal County Down Golf Club. Gary Player leads the field, including some familiar names from the PGA Senior Tour. It's coming up on ABC Sports next weekend. Well, there is Tiger with instructor Butch Harmon as they move to the practice putting green, getting closer to the tee time for Woods and Duval. And 18 holes from history, as we said before. And the record crowds are just shoehorning their way into every nook and cranny of this Scottish town. There is a different feel. I mean, we, you've been to so many more big golf events than I have. And big sporting events in general it's a different feel here today it's hard to describe but it's wonderful tingling for everyone involved you were involved in 1989 when you won your second u.s open of trying to set some sort of history people built it up it hadn't been done in the half century could somebody win back-to-back -back u.s opens we're talking tiger with even bigger history today does it matter it does it impact what he does when he steps on the first tee i don't think so at all he's used to this situation he's done this before when in three junior u.s junior amateurs when in three u.s amateurs uh the master spot 12 things like that but he is so focused and he's so mentally tough that he might think about it coming up 18 but i don't think honestly he'll think about it to after it's done we talk about six shot leads can people come back from and last year in the british open we saw paul Laurie start mm -hmm. 10 off the pace we saw Greg Norman at the Masters in 1996 have the six-shot lead. Nick Faldo there coming back to win. But you have Tiger Woods. It's a different animal who's at the top of the leaderboard. Absolutely. There's, there's some problems on the golf course, but I think he's special, more special than anybody else. He's tougher, stronger, thinks it better. Uh, you don't win these tournaments by as many strokes as he's doing, but these are some of the things that make St. Andrews different and tough. Tiger putted from some 55 yards short of the sixth green on Saturday. And believe it, that wasn't a bad effort at all. And these are some of the things that we're going to see today, playing well or not playing well, some of the nuances of this golf course. Yes, and in the pot bunkers, as we said all week long, a penalty stroke. Here we have Steve Flesh yesterday in the 13th fairway. You can't advance it at all. It's like a penalty stroke if you drive it in them. Now let's look at the 17th hole, and this is a very dangerous par four, maybe the toughest par four in the world. You have out of bounds on the right, you have deep rough on the left, you have a blonde tee shot, but this is the second shot, the toughest second shot in golf. You have the road hole bunker, which is famous. You can't even get out if you put in there. And then you have the road to the right. Let's take a look at what happened yesterday. Sergio Garcia put it so close to the face, couldn't even think about going out, had to put it back to the middle of the bunker, and had to take his medicine. Very tough to take. Let's go back out to the 14th. Oh, Hazinger ran his first putt pass for birdie, missed his second one. That's a bogey six from just short of the green in two. Boys really squandering a wonderful round. He was out in 30. There's a beautiful view of the 17th hole there, the road hole, one of the most famous holes in golf. And just over there is the practice fairway. And earlier, Steve Melnick had a chance to catch up with David Duval. David, early in the week, you were not 100%. Uh, based on a scale of, say, of 1 to 10, where are you now? <laughs> oh, 5 or 6 maybe. You know, yesterday was the best I felt. Um, really struggled the first few days. and. And the, of the tournament and all earlier in the week practicing and you know today I don't really know because I'm just getting started to get loosened up but uh, you know hopefully I can at least have the opportunity to go play today uh, without any pain. What is it that you can or can't do because of the problems you're having with your back? Well um, you know I, I, I to be perfectly honest I haven't really tested it because I don't really want to find out what I can't do you know I'm 
kind of pleased with what I can and just try to I just try to swing easy. I, I know that I definitely can't go out balls hard. Um, and so I'm, I'm tending to hit the more club when I need to as opposed to trying to hit a, a less club harder. And, and uh, that's basically it. How significant was it to you personally to shoot 66 yesterday? Did you get yourself in the final group today to play with Tiger? Well, it was important um, simply because I, um, you know, wanted to be there, wanted to be a part of that experience. And, um, you know, I didn't know where, where I was going to start the day, if it was going to be two behind or four, or as it turns out, six. And so now I'm in a position where I'm, I'm, I'm tied in second place, six shots back with uh, the realization that we're playing the final round of the Open Championship with uh, me in a position of probably needing to shoot somewhere around 63 or 64 to have a legitimate chance. Well, Curtis, first obvious question, is there a 63 or 64 out there looking at the weather right now? Well, I think the best thing for David Duvall right now is to see some low scores out there. Davis Love, VJ Singh, Paul Azinger. The wind is laying down. It was blowing this morning. I, I was out earlier. The flag sticks are not in the toughest positions. I have seen them at St. Andrews. There is a chance. It's not a big one, but there is a chance. Watch that and see if Tiger does back up at all during the day. Something he's been able to do, mistake free. Paul Laurie last year came from 10 back, waited an hour and 43 minutes for the last putt to drop on the 72nd hole. But has the greatest comeback in the history of the majors. So David Duval would not make history by erasing a six shot deficit, but it would be an all time story to tell. Number one and number two in the world will tee off in less than 13 minutes in the same group we saw that a decade ago at St. Andrews. It was the third round when Nick Faldo and Greg Norman, two and one in the world respectively, went head to head in the final group in the third round. For Greg Norman, it was a day of being in the hunt, being in contention after shooting 66-66, but nothing went well on the third round Saturday in 1990. He shot 76. For Nick Faldo, everything went well. The driving was in the fairway. The irons were precise, and when they weren't close to the hole, the putter was hot. Faldo shot 67, Norman 76. On that day at St. Andrews, number two in the world, top number one in the world. Norman went on to win the title by five in 1990. What will happen is one and two meet in 2000. The story gets told in the next 12 minutes. Back at the first tee, the penultimate game, second to last group on the golf course. Darren Clark of Northern Ireland and Thomas Bjorn of Denmark. Bjorn, three rounds in the 60s, 69, 69, 68. Big tall fella, good swinger of the golf club. Always in the top 10 to 15 on the European order of merit. Good solid player. He's been there for the last four years. He's off with Darren Clark. We saw Butch Harmon. Tiger Woods instructor. He also instructs Darren Clark. 17. Davis Love is having a pretty good round so far today. This is his second shot, the road hole. Davis started the day two under par. Comes to the 17th, eight under. And that was a really good shot. Long is the best way to play this hole today. Do not be sure. Adjacent to the 17th is the second hole. And this is Dennis Paulson for birdie. Paulson also started with a birdie three. Can he make it two? And the 37-year-old from Vista, California. We call him the chief. He can tomahawk a wedge better than anybody else out there. <laughs> to three. Steve Flesh, the left-hander. Been a very solid Open Championship for him. So three pars for Mr. Flesh starting out. He remains at eight under. Now, up ahead at the short six, it's only 412 yards. The flag stick today just on the crown of the green. There's a low sort of valley in front, and most players from here have taken a putter. And that's exactly what he's done. These fairways are incredibly quick. They're so firm and so tight. Back home, it would be like putting in the fringe at worst or at best it may be as fast as a lot of greens that you all may play at home. Steve they're the fastest 
hardest fairways I have ever seen in my life. I asked Gales this morning on the practice that he had, had he ever seen fairways like this before? And he said no. These are the tightest fairways he's ever seen. They're great to play off of if you're struck in the ball solidly. Look at this. You know, the hardest job we have is to try to enhance pictures which are foreign to most. Now back at three, else for birdie. And twice a runner up at the open and the master suddenly moves to 10 under. Uh, yes, he's six back, but he certainly has the talent to close the gap. Back at one. And in the fairway, Thomas Bjorn, Darren Clark, Bjorn second on the way. Beautiful shot. That's the closest we've seen just about all week long. We haven't seen a ball short of the flag stick at all. The couple that were just about hole high yesterday came on back into the Swilkin Burn. Yeah, anything we've seen short has been in the water. <laughs> but Claret Jug awaits. Will it be the final jewel in the career Grand Slam for Tiger Woods, trying to become the youngest player to win all four majors? He and David Duval tee off next at St. Andrews. Picture postcard setting, the town of St. Andrews, the North Sea in the distance, the fans who have found their way into lucky seats, seats that I'm sure they will not be giving up anytime soon. Watch all the players finish in the championship. Watch the last group about to tee off. Well, the odds on Tiger Woods have been the best ever odds throughout the week, but can't match today. No bets were being taken at Ladd Brooks betting legal in the UK. No bets taken on Tiger Woods today. Longtime British Open observers can't remember seeing that. Tiger started at 15 to 8 during the week. Yesterday he was down to 2 to 11. That's in Secretariat's neighborhood. In 73 at the Belmont, Secretariat was 1 to 10. But no more bets on Tiger Woods today as he chases history. Trying to complete the modern career Grand Slam and join Sarazen, Hogan, Player, and Nicholas. Final group of the Open Championship. First tee, Ifa Ropes in the starter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final game of the 129th Open Golf Championship. On the tee, David Duval. And the Tiger Woods. Squirrel at the end of the swing, picked up from friend Mark O'Mara, usually tells you Tiger likes it. And he does. They've been in the same group once before. Earlier this year at the Byron Nelson, Duval shot 70, Wood shot 63 from the seventh to last group, and finished fourth. What will happen today at the British Open?
Wilkin Byrne that guards the first green at St. Andrews. David Duval has already played. Back live for Tigers second. A sand wedge from a 115. Pretty tough shot. A little follow and win. Hard green. Well, it's supposed to be tough. You heard Butch talk about conservative play today, and I think that's part of St. Andrews. You have to play smart around this golf course. There you see Tiger with his Sunday red on. Show you what David Duval did for his second shot from a similar distance. So much depends on the lie. If you get a little bit of a lie that's too tight or scratchy, you have to do that. You have to play smart beyond the hole. Fairways are so, so tight. Dozen birdies today at the first. Let's go ahead two to Steve Melnick at the third. Dennis Paulson now at 10 under this for another birdie. This is only his second British Open played last year at Carnoustie and says that he really likes playing over here. This is so foreign to what he's used to. 2-4. Two, Long par four. Let's see if Ernie Elts can make another birdie. Already two under today. Yeah. Seen a lot of birdies early, but remember these guys have nothing to lose. They have to go full bore at it. They know they have to shoot an extremely low score to have any chance at all. Birdies at one, three, and four in the world number three. A couple of groups detached trying to put up a number to make Tiger think a little bit. As Woods marks at the first. You know, there's so many little battles that are going on in his head today. Somebody might get close, but he has to stick with his game plan, just play. He has to remember that if he does shoot 60 or 70 or 71, somebody has to really go low. Uh, can't panic if somebody gets within two or three. Play your game. That's why it's so tough sometimes to play with a big lead. Start playing differently than you normally would play. Fabulous shot from down in that burn. You see the water's low. It's only three yards across that burn, but uh, a three-yard hazard that uh, swoops across that first green and then eventually empties into the North Sea has seen plenty yeah, of golf balls drop in there over time or spin back in. Duval and Woods, if you remember last year when David was number one after the Players' Championship, Tiger wrestled that spot away and has held it ever since. They became friends and started a relationship in part because they spent some time together. Other than being at the same events, since they weren't in the same group until earlier this year, when they came over to prepare for the British Open, there was a group of players, including the late Payne Stewart, Mark O'Mara, David and Tiger were together in Ireland. And I remember David Duval telling me last year, before the showdown at Sherwood, the Duval Woods prime time match, about just a neat scene. Tiger and David, one and two in the world, in a field in Ireland, in jeans, hitting balls. No cameras, no reporters, and they were playing golf horse. Can you hit one of these shots? Can you hit one of these? They have similar problems because of their newfound stature in the sport and have something in common. Thus, they've become friendly competitors in the last year. Duval for birdie. But it doesn't mean they want to beat each other's brains out. And they should. And that is a good start, good putt right there. But they have so much in common. They grew up with the game, they practiced, they all had dreams of becoming the best in the world. And the personalities might be different, but you grow up and you realize when you get to know somebody that you do have so much in common. Only they understand what that small group is going through. And all of you guys who've been at the top of the world in your profession out there understand how the commonality develops. So he'll finish for his par. <laughs> 17th green, very close by. The cheers you hear. An opening birdie four for Duval. As you join us for our live coverage this morning, a reminder that later this afternoon at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, we will have a one-hour recap of the events on this final Sunday at the 129th Open Championship. Our coverage presented by MasterCard. So 5 to 6 Eastern Time, a one-hour recap of what transpired today at St. Andrews. If you know somebody who can't be by the TV for some reason this morning, let them know they can relive the moments again this afternoon.
I always felt like the first shot of the day was the most important shot of the day because it got you off either in a, a negative or positive frame of mind. You hit a good solid tee shot. Now you're off and running. First hole is so very important and the first putt. You make the first putt and you feel like you got a feel and rhythm for the day, feel for the greens. And inside your head, you feel like you can make it. So Woods had a much more legitimate birdie run, but both he and Duval will make a par four here at the opening hole. Duval stays six back. You've already seen Ernie Elts move a shot closer. Then Duval already sits. Els is 11 under par and five back. And they are off to the second hole. And let's take a look at it. Blind tee shot. The area right there keeps you from seeing the fairway out to the right. The one place you do not want to be is the bunker on the left. It's 264 yards to it. Most of the players are laying up with a long iron or maybe going just to the right of it. There it's 47 yards wide, and that bunker is called Chiefs. Every bunker out here has a name, or worse, sometimes. <laughs> but this green runs away from the players from front to back. Difficult to keep it around the hole. A lot of bumps and bruises and mounds to the right. Half of this green. Big slope in the back center. And the day's hole location just over the front of the green. Now Duval with a long iron to make sure he lays up short of that cheap spunker. Still removing the tee carefully from the ground. You know, these tees are so tough. Some of the players are talking about how hard it is to get a tee in the ground. Especially the ninth tee. <laughs> to 18. Davis love finishing this for par. Oh. It'll be a round of 67. Davis had a, a great final round going. They'll finish at seven under par, probably out of the top 10. Let's go back. Where else? The last group, that too. Absolutely perfect. Good safe shot. Butch Harmon, Tiger's coach, just told us all week that he's going to play this golf course conservatively, make sure he keeps it out of the deep little pot bunkers, and that's exactly what he's done. Good, safe, solid start. But we'll return with more third round coverage of the 129th British Open presented by MasterCard after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the 129th British Open on ABC Sports. We're back at the second fairway and Tiger Woods second shot. 181 yards, he took a long time to choose a nine iron and studied what's up there at the green, although he cannot see the putting surface. Needs to land it just short and bounce it on up if he's going with a nine iron from that distance. Absolutely fantastic shot. One of those holes where everyone's happy with par. There's been eight bogeys and nine birdies here so far. Good bit closer for David from 159. Oh, this is unbelievable. Two of the best five shots all day at the second. Punch and counter punch. That's exactly what Duval has to do. This is a big day for him. He was so happy to get paired with him in the final group he said I want to be out with him I want to look him in the eye I want to show him that I've got some game and that's what he's doing head forward to the fifth now and this is Ernie Earl's second shot at the par five the 
average drive on this par 5 for the whole field has been over 300 yards so far this week. The bigger hitters hitting at 375, 380. And that was a well thought out shot. Landed it short on the down slope, ran it through the big barranca in front. And he has about 60 feet for an eagle three. Don't want to miss the green left there, so it was a good wise shot. Hills is five back. If he can knock that one in, he might put a little bit of fear into the eyes of Tiger Woods. A couple at 11 under, three of them at 10. Lots of players hoping for the chance to catch the Tiger. Major championship golf for the ladies. Kari Webb leads by four, only two players under par. Today, Webb is going for her third major in 12 months, winning Du Maurier last year and the Nabisco Championship, Dinah Shore, earlier this year. The seniors, Tom Jenkins, Gil Morgan, Bob Murphy, tied there. Arnold Palmer in his 1,000th event at three over par. Brad Faxon, who failed as he came over here trying to qualify for the British Open, has gone back and as defending champ is tied with Esteban Toledo heading into the final round in upstate New York at the BC Open. The golf story this weekend, in addition to here, and we go back to Ian at the second. Thanks, Mike. Both players hit fantastic shots in here, Curtis. Well, you know, we just talked about how, or Butch talked about how Tiger, Tiger was going to play some conservative golf, and we didn't see that on the first two holes. You know, played right up aggressively against the burn and hit it in there six or seven feet on the first hole, and now it might not have looked like a chancy shot here, but just short of this green, there's a huge bottom, huge swale that can kick your ball anywhere. So, two great shots. They're certainly different to the way we've seen him playing uh, the first three rounds. People have said because of his length, he looks like he's aggressive all the time, but he's not. He's playing very sensibly. I wouldn't mind betting that was about a five iron off the second tee. Well, one other thing that it enables them to play so aggressively this week is the lack of wind we have had every day. You certainly would expect, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour, at least one, maybe two days here at the Open Championship, but this week has been ideal and consistent from direction point of view as yep. well. So they're playing the same course every day. Another makeable chance for a birdie. Just a little settler these ones are early in the round. Relax the nerve endings. Ahead one to the third. Thomas Bjorn. One under through two and just lets that get away. Asked by the press if he thought he could win. He said no. It's a two. At least he was honest. Yeah. Tiger taps in for a par. I was in this position in 1990 playing with Nick Faldo who was on top of his game. I was in the last group and it was very difficult to not push myself to try and make birdies at every hole and I think Duval and a lot of these other players that are out trying to catch Tiger have to be careful that they don't force the issue too much. Duval also to get to 11 under. Really just a tap in. Very good start by the world's number two. It's just exactly what he needed. He has to keep inching closer to three. Moments ago, Darren Clark, who birdied the first, this for birdie to move into a tie for second. The man who was second to Justin Leonard three years ago. So early birdies sending a message that there are some to be had out here. Four players now within five shots of the lead. Tiger Woods holds it. One, two, and three in the world. Woods, Duval, and Els at the top of that leaderboard. As we've just passed three o'clock local time, it's a 7 a.m. on the West Coast if you're just waking up. Tiger and Duval in the last group teed off about 20 minutes ago. Both parred the first. Duval, the birdie at the second, as you see the rest of the field. Many Americans have done very well. The PGA Tour players have had the better of the overall scoreboard as that you look at the top of it. We're going to turn the microphone over to a man who's been a part of the British Open as a broadcaster and player for 50 British Opens. Now, our colleague Peter Alice. Good Thank afternoon, you, sir. Thank you, and it's very nice to be with you on this special day. This is the fifth, Ernie Els. Big putt for a three on this par five. 
is getting closer and closer. And Peter, is this the nicest weather you've ever seen for an entire week of the British <laughs> Open? No, we have we have very good weather. Oh, poor <laughs> climate. But good or is it the other way around? Third hole, Duval on the tee. Had the honour on the first. He hasn't lost it yet. The heat haze is shimmering away there. It was chilly early this morning, though, but now it's beautiful. Three ninety-seven yards. Duval still moving fairly gingerly when he bends down. He's not sort of zooming around too much, but uh, seems to be swinging very freely and safely. Tiger next. Just the right half of the fairway would be a good spot for this one. Apart from his opening tee shot, which I thought sounded a little heavy, he struck everything right out the middle of the bat, and uh, that looks to be okay. Not quite as so much chatter as yesterday, but this is a serious day, you know, and uh, I'm expecting great things, and I hope you're going to stay with us and enjoy it with us. At age 24, the same age as Tiger Woods is now, young Tom Morris had already won four British Open. While away from home playing a money match, he got word that his wife was critically ill. Before he could get back to St. Andrews, she was dead. Young Tom, bereft, died in his sleep three months later on Christmas Day of 1875. The inscription on his memorial here reads, He thrice in succession won the champion belt and held it without rivalry, and yet without envy, his many amiable qualities being no less acknowledged than his golfing achievements. Only L's at the fifth, the par five, on in two. Here in three, now this for a birdie. Ooh, tried to get out. So, for once, uh, the challengers are getting out of the traps fairly quickly. They failed to do that for the previous three days. And to the third now, Woods, the man who's played the best of the golf. It measures a long way, 156 yards, but the hole is 40 paces deep in this green. That was just a pitching wedge. Wind from the right. Well, he got some spin on that one, Judy. Unfortunately, it moved it a foot or two away from the hole, but safely on. Shot was played from a little low area where I, I suppose a little water stood, and um, uh, there was some nice thick green grass. <laughs> You see grass. Now, David Duval. One nineteen to the hole for David Duval. Sand wedge um, from the center of the fairway. He gets a little benefit of wind at his back. From Tiger's angle, he played more right into a crosswind from the right. He could get this one close. He's coming in from a nice angle and another cracking shot. <laughs> Tiger is coming in over that shoulder. The bunkies coming up to the green on the right-hand side there. So he had the most, uh, the more difficult uh, second shot in. Now Mickelson at the sixth hole, putting it from goodness knows how far away. Up and over. That's it. He's given it a bit too much. It's from about 50 yards out from the first ah. start of the green. We've seen two or three players from that cross area there. Players do not get a drop from the crosswalk this week. Mickelson, four fours and then a birdie. So many of these players this week have played intermittently well. A good round and a poorish round and so on, sort of 269s, 274s, that sort of thing. They've lacked that consistency to keep any pressure really on Woods, who's played so well. Now, Lehman from out of the big gully in front of the fifth, third shot. 
do well to get this close. It's one you could leave short, leave it on the bank. The fairway is cut pretty tight, so he, he may well be putting this. Yes, he is. Needs to aim it left. There's some hogs back there. You probably get it left or right. Oh, Tom, I don't think you saw that one correctly. Wow, there's an, a strange air around the course today. So many people here, um, of course they understand what winning the four majors are all about, but uh, it, they're, they're so keen for him to be challenged by someone. There's Bjorn, who's uh, been striking the ball very well. The fourth hole is second shot. From Shaved one, the hole a couple of times. It's from 150 yards, Peter. Straight down the breeze. Now back to Tiger Woods. On the third. For a birdie. So three steady pars for Woods. There's four ahead of the field now, four ahead of Els. Duval has a chance though to uh, get a birdie and move to within four. I'm not trying to tickle your palate, but uh, you know, strange things have happened in this game. And uh, who remembers uh, Olympic with Arnold Palmer? Was he seven shots ahead with nine holes to play? Greatest figure in golf at that time against Casper, and then a playoff, Fleck and Hogan. Uh, Fleck had no chance. Hogan won. Uh, maybe grasping at straws just to keep a bit of excitement going. But whatever happens, I think the, the style of Woods' play has been uh, absolutely wonderful. But he's still got 15 more holes left. If this fella can pop this in, it will do him no harm at all. Have at thee, Sir Percy, as they used to say in days gone by. Not too bad, PJ Tour. Events, wins, look at all that. Quite extraordinary how he had that rush of victories in a short time. And you know, he really has been overshadowed. You have to remember, he's been number two in the world since he lost his number one ranking. He's been overshadowed by Tiger Woods, but. And so people think he hasn't played very well, but he has had 14 top 10s since his last win, the 99 Atlanta Classic. And, you know, that's pretty good plan. He hasn't won, but he's played consistently well. As you see, Tiger and David head to the fourth. Let's take a look at it. Big, strong, par four, 464 yards. But once again, because the fairways are so firm, the whole plan much, much shorter than that. Players will go to the left over these mounds. Everything to the right, where you see the white shaded area, that's where the players will drive and beyond to the right. You do have the two bunkers that could come into play. After a good solid tee shot, these players will hit six or seven irons into a green that is guarded a little different right in front by a, a huge mound. Makes the run-up shots much tougher. And the green slopes from left to right quite a bit. Today's hole location all the way in the back left. Very difficult to get it close to and two. The smart, prudent play would be out to the right just a little bit. But when you have to make up shots, you have to do some, some very aggressive things. But David Duvall said in his interview before that he wouldn't change his strategy too much because of St. Andrews and the Greens make it very difficult to get it close to the hole consistently. So he'll try to play his normal game and hopefully make some putts. 
little weight here. Of course, this is quite a narrow fairway if you go up the in the proper direction. So they fire away to the left. And if someone's coming down, it's courtesy to wait. And that's true with most of the holes here, at Peter. You the farther left you go, that's the wide open area, the double fairways, the parallel fairways. But the angle is really the best angle if you go up the right side. But that's the dangerous angle because of gorse bushes, some heather, and a lot of little pot bunkers. stand on most of these tees you really don't have anything in the world to aim at you have to pick out something maybe the end of a, a grandstand maybe a, a steeple in the great distance Thomas Bjorn for a par up ahead no. you don't want eight ten footers for par early on in the piece now Tiger is that a three-wood? It looked like it could. It didn't look like the big-headed driver. That's a good spot. As long as he doesn't find an awkward little lie on the fairway. Duval's run through and could be on the upslope. There you see Greg Rita, David Duval's caddy. We talked a lot about Steve Williams yesterday, Tiger's caddy, but Greg Rita's no... Second banana when it comes to caddies. <laughs> now, we'll stop. Look at the word. I mean, he's 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 been to very many. He won the John, he won with John Daly here at St Andrews. He won with me at two U.S. Opens. He's been around a very experienced. You mean he won with you and he wasn't able to retire? <laughs> uh, I I find that almost impossible to believe. We will return with more final round coverage of the 129th British Open presented by Mastercard after this message and word from our ABC stations. You're watching the 129th British Open on ABC Sports. Tiger's second shot at the fourth. One sixty-two, a pitching wedge needs to take it just right of the flagstick for safety. Shot. Well, a beautiful. Beautiful shot, well directed. That's a little bit unfortunate just to kill it on that little groove, little slope. But a very good strike. Now Duval. I think he actually caught a very fortunate spot on the hillside down the, where he is on the hill is not too steep. It's just 149 yards. He has a good look at the flagstick. Good place to start it out to the right and just let it fall left with the wind. Well, not bad, but really from there, perhaps we only give him four out of ten if we're giving Tiger seven out of ten for his shot in. Uh, Bjorn's uh, challenge seems to be fading. Peter, he missed a little putt at three for a birdie, about five feet, and then three putt at four, then drove it in this bunker here on a hole that you'd... 80% uh, of the people are going to birdie. Tony Ells at the seventh. This is the seventh hole that crosses with the 11th hole to par three and Ernie hitting a three wood just to keep it once again short of a lot of little pot bunkers that are in the distance. Actually, the players could probably drive this green if it wasn't for the big bunker guard in the front right. Yeah, it's been done, you know. You can sneak in around the left-hand side. You use part of the 11th green and then swing it the last sort of 40, 50 yards across the green. But the, everything's got to be in your favor. David Tom's third shot at the fifth. That's almost where Tom oh. Lehman was, and he has been rather fortunate in getting his ball to stop on the bank. That could have come all the way back. Back to the Tiger. Interesting part of the scoring. Um, 
When this day started, Tiger Woods had made 18 birdies this week. David Duvall had made 16 birdies this week. So the difference between them really was more about a couple extra mistakes on David's part. But now they've both made 18 birdies this week. Yeah, Tiger's great strength has been between the uh, the 8th and the 13th. He's really scored all his uh, birdies in that area, or most of them. The first six or seven holes and the last six have not given up many birdies for Tiger so far. He's had that wonderful run which takes in the loop here where if you don't get something going there you struggle. If you're not a few under par by the time you get to the 14th tee you're in trouble. There we are, Mrs. Plod. We call policeman Plod here. Mr. Plod. Mr. and Mrs. Plod. Rather childish I know but charming don't you think? Yeah, it's really swinging right the whole way off this. A bonnie lassie. Eight seven eight. Must remember, I'm gonna buy those in the lottery this week. This is not the easiest of putts. David came up well short. This well, he, he's got to go off the top of the hill into the hollow and then up the other side, Curtis. That's it. And he goes up, up again and then down again. And because if he gets it running a bit too fast when he gets into the last five or six feet. It's very easy to go six or seven feet by. <coughs> Although the greens aren't frighteningly quick, are they? No, they are slower by, I guess, our standards at home, but that's Lynx greens, too. Well, you've got to be wary if you, if you do get a spell of windy weather, the ball can blow about on the greens and then you can't play at all. So you've got to leave something there. Duval, long putt for a birdie, but be happy enough with a par. Down, now back up, now break into the right. Look out. Boy, that was a lovely touch there. And if that had gone in, well, ifs and whys and buts. Horseshoes and hand grenades, Peter. Absolutely right. <laughs> Mickelson at the seventh for a birdie. Boom. Two under, nine under for the championship. Now, Tiger, now he'll have seen that ball. And again, you see it's line and pace. So important here. He's just got to get it right going over the top of the hill. And the ball really has to die into the hole. I don't think, unless you're remarkably fortunate, you can hold a putt like this going at any speed. I think the, the ball has to travel no more than... 12 or 14 inches past the hole to have a sort of two or three way chance of dropping into the hole. Quickly to the seventh. That was from 74 yards with the flagstick tucked over a little knob and he's judged it beautifully. Back to Tiger for a birdie. to do that this week and many other weeks since he hit the professional scene it's given to very few people but over the centuries that games have been played there have probably been about 20 that have managed it and their names will live on and on welcome back to the fifth tee and after that spectacular birdie at the fourth tiger woods with the honor There's a little green stone. It's actually a brown stone covered in green matting. But that's 300 yards from the tee. There it is in top of view. That's and the average... It big. is. This is running Look up near the 400-yard mark. Well, they say Craig Wood, I think it was, drove into the green side. But, you know, the other side, this was 1933 or something or other. So when there was a slight breeze behind. To so number now, seven. Ernie yeah. Ells. And he has this for birdie. Great start for Els, looking for yet another one. For early birdies for Ernie, moving him with Duval at 12 under. 
Back to five. And David Duval's tee shot. And left a bit. Peter, his, his misses with that bad back have been left. He can't support the swing through it. And he's missed a lot of shots left, which he does not typically do. But here, it's not too punishing, Steve. There's, there's, at least there's a bit of room there for him. We've heard the comments of Steve Melnick, Ian Baker Finch, and Peter Alice. We'll be describing the action for the next little bit. And Curtis Strange will rejoin us shortly. Tiger Woods, one under par for the day. His lead is five over Duval and Els. And while we have a moment, let's rejoin our host for our British Open coverage again on ABC Sports, the great Jim McKay. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mike. You know, seeing St. Andrews as docile as it's been this week, I've been thinking back to ABC's first St. Andrews Open. It was 1964, and the wind blew. How it blew. On one round, I saw Jack Nicklaus, who was carrying a good deal more weight then than he does now, nearly blown over, really, by a wind that gusted more than 50 miles an hour. Tony Lima was the winner. He'd never been out of the United States until Arnold Palmer, who did not play that year, told him that well, that he could never be a world golfer until he played at St. Andrews. Arnie even lent his caddy, Tip Anderson, to Lima for the occasion. Tony was appalled at the weather when he arrived. He said to me, Jim, we have an island in San Francisco Bay that would be better for a vacation than this place. It's called Alcatraz. But he changed. He fell in love with Scotland, and the Scots reciprocated. As for his caddy, he said, I could never have won without Tip. I just did what he told me to. We'll never really know what Lima would have accomplished in his career. He and his wife died in an airplane crash two years later. The story of Champagne Tony. Yes, yeah. he earned that name after buying small bottles of champagne for the members in the press room after uh, his championship here in 64. I wonder if there'll be champagne served in the press room today, whether it's Woods or Duval or else after their championship. Let's go back to Ian, who has the call at the fifth. Now, Thomas Bjorn's had all sorts of troubles here. This is for a par five. Coming from the correct side of the hole, anyway, you can see there it was just a little uphill at the end. Now, to the first par three, Ernie Ells at the eighth. 155 yards into the breeze. Very good safe shot for Els. The whole location today just over that deep bunker in the front. Very hard to get close. Ernie made his par at the seventh. And we head back to the fifth. Duval will be first away, just coming from the left rough. And the whole location today, Peter, right in that very front corner of the green. Yeah, you've got to have a, a lot of good fortune if you get it close. To get it within 10 feet, something's got to happen that uh, you have no control over. He's coming in from the left-hand side, across the, uh, the sort of shoulder of the green. And, uh, well, if he gets it on the green within 40 feet, he'd have done well. Ball wandered around and um, came to rest in a... A very nice lie, um, um, sitting perfectly. It's just slightly below his feet. He can see the flagstick. 209 yards, he has a five iron. Cannot miss left. He has to be long and right. Hit it well up in the air and right at the flagstick. That's a superb shot. Slung it out to the right, high. And he's got it. I think that's as good as you could do, unless you've got an absolute fluke. I agree. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't possibly have tried to do anything different to that. The rough on the left side, so thick to seven now. And let's catch up with Tom Lehman, his second shot. Both Lehman and Dennis Paulson, two under today. Both ten under for the championship and tied for fourth. Staying away from the trouble of being short with their second here at the seventh. Good to see Tom back in form. A couple of birdies went earlier this year in Phoenix. After a long dry spell of PGA Tour victories. This is the camera alongside the fifth green and you, you get some idea of the 
the big humps and the bumps, enormous canals that cross this. Uh, someone suggested to speed up play here in the future, we might put a couple of tunnels underneath the course so spectators <laughs> could just walk under the... I don't think with the water table so high that would be a very good idea. No. Unless you could make it a bit like Venice and we could get handsome young men rowing you underneath. <laughs> We've seen the uh, good scoring from some of the players who got out early, like Davis Love. Paul Azinger finished with four consecutive pars, shot 67. And Azinger finishes eight under for the championship. He is currently tied 4-11th. Fred Couples with a couple of early birdies. You see most of the players who got started have themselves under par for the day. Vijay Singh gave a shot back on the way in, shot 68. The Masters champ finishing at seven under. Good to see Nota Begay bounce back after some struggles in the second and early third round. Colin Montgomery shot 70, so his quest for a top 10, let alone a victory at the British Open, will have to wait again. It's just been a couple of top 10s for Monty in his British Open career, and yet to win that elusive major. Garcia, nothing going today, one over. Let's go back to five. And as they make their way up there, Tiger's come up just short of the green, was trying to run it up the very steep bank in front. And we found him here on the second day where he made a fantastic two putt. And then again, it's, it's, well, you can see it perfectly there. It's a good, what, 15 feet up to the top of the oh, green. Yeah. And of course, he's, well, you can see he's putting it, but he's got to hit so hard to get it up the first bit. And if you don't get it quite right and you, you aim it to four or five feet one way or t'other, we saw Tom Lehman. It looks as if he'd made a total miscue. It went, ended up 20 feet to the right. I think for me, you see, you've got the bank which is right to left in front of him. Then he swings you left, and then he goes over the top and left to right again. So you could almost give this a good thump almost straight at it. And, and really, it's, it's a bit of hope for the best. But if you totally mis misjudge it, there's trouble waiting past the flag. But there's really not much else you can do. Might chip it with a five iron or something. For such an easy hole, Tiger's played this hole in par birdie par first three rounds the holes averaged four and a half so it's uh, the easiest hole on the course and once again he's finding a little trouble here well we, we were talking about trying he's got to be so exact you see it probably didn't need an awful lot more to be good you've now come off that shoulder and down to the hole and he's 40 feet short from there to the flag is 13 paces on so a par would be a good score for tiger here at the fifth this green shares with the 13th hole there's seven double greens here at St Andrews and four single greens and the double greens add up to 18 the fifth and the 13th four and 14 six and 12 seven and 11 there at the start and finish of the loop so just a little reminder there for you that uh, they do all add up to 18 we'll head over to the seventh and Tom Lehman to get to 11 under and alone in fourth Judge Putt for the 96 champ at Litham, who feels his whole game has improved in the last 12 months. Let's go back to our last group at five. And David Duvall will be first to putt here for Eagle. Now, what a body blow it would be if he could knock this hit. I mean, perhaps I'm flirting on the edge of fantasy, all right. but uh, that's all part of the, of the game. Why I love it so much, because you never know, you never know what's going to happen. All these people, well, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Golf is not a game like that. Today, I can't say I'm going to hit three home runs. You might miss everything and be out and gone home and be sitting there having a coffee before anyone's, before the game's over. And it's the same with this. You never know. Great no example. Master. Sorry, Judy. Excuse me. I'm waffling again. No, that's fine. Um, but a great example of taking what this golf course gives you. Tiger had a wedge into this par five, and um, it was one of the hardest short shots ever. Well, it is if you try to be too precise where the flag is today. If he'd, if he'd aimed it into the middle of the green with his putting stroke and two putted, he's got another birdie. Then someone's got to gather two birdies or an eagle to, to, to stay with him. See, I think that's a misjudgment, small though it may be, on his part. It could be very expensive. We saw Ernie Ells, apart from a similar situation, big right to left swing here and quite quick as it comes towards the hole. Out she goes now, turns left. Pace is important. Oh. 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 Five. Five, Just too much borrow. They both played three, but the difference is that 
Duval is uh, just a few feet away. But Tiger's a long way off. Well, as football season gets closer, Monday nights become TV events on ABC once again, as they do every fall. We'll start the week before Monday Night Football's season opener with the battle at Bighorn. Tiger Woods, Sergio Garcia, the Lincoln Financial Group battle at Bighorn, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Monday, August 28th, just four Mondays from this coming one on ABC Sports. And a very long putt for a birdie four here for Tiger. He was having a lot of trouble with his putting at the tournament a couple of weeks ago in Chicago at the Western Open. He had just taken a couple of weeks off after winning the US Open. And he and his coach, Butch Harmon, have been working very hard on this aspect of his game. He was pushing a lot of his putts. And I think all of that work that he put in on the putting green there in Chicago at the Western has really put him in good stead this week. As I said before, so many making birdie here. More than half the field, in fact, have birdied this hole. There's been 18 eagles, two of them today. So a five's not a good score for Tiger. He's had three fives and one four in this hole all week. Remains at 17 under to six. Yeah. Thomas Bjorn, one over through five, is second. That is perfectly played. Look at this. That was from 75 yards. He actually pitched it into the bank. Beautiful shot. Back at five. Very makeable birdie chance here for Duval. Oh, boy. What a waste. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He seemed to be putting that almost right half of the hole. He's just come on a putt the other side with a swing of about eight feet, so... Well, it's either a mishit or a misdirection or something because it's fairly obvious he came from the other side of the hole slowly. It must topple in. The hole's cut on a little ridge there, Peter. It's sort of right on the edge. It's the toughest hole location on the whole green. It was very similar to that yesterday, only a couple of paces further on. And we've seen a lot of putts from inside six feet missed. Big chance missed there. Well, David Duval reminds five behind Tiger Woods. Woods leads here in the 129th Open Championship presented by MasterCard here at St Andrews. Great drive. Tiger Woods tee shot here at the short sixth. And he has been consistently through the crosswalk each day. That crosswalk does not allow you to get a free drop. Yeah, that tower's a good line, yeah. David going the more conservative route. Mike mentioned they were paired together in Dallas in the final round. This is the first time ever for a final round pairing with Duval and Woods. 2-8. Pick it nine. up at nine instead with Ernie Eltz blowing away, turning away from the blowing uh, divot, I should say, with his second at the ninth. That was from 108 yards. <laughs> it's made three straight pars, 12 under, five back. Steve Flesh in this group dropped a shot at the fourth and fifth, and Steve is six under. But Ernie made the uh, big noise here with birdies on four of the first five to get to 12 under. Sent a little bit of a message. Back four groups to where Woods and Duval were. Doesn't want to make the kind of history he could today, being a runner-up in three consecutive majors are checking couldn't find somebody who's had that happen in their career. It's an impressive thing to say, but it's not something you want to brag about. Yes, rounds two and three were expensive for him here, Mike. Uh, he, after the opening 66 where he played beautifully, he didn't capitalize on that out early on the second day. Virtually no wind. There is his record, Peter, in the majors. Bruce Crampton in 72 had back-to-back runner-ups in majors. Crenshaw in 79, the British and PGA. Harry Cooper in 36, Norman, end of 86, beginning of 87, Bob Charles in 68, 
Jack Nicklaus in 71 after he won the PGA, runner-up at the Masters and U.S. Open. 64 is a runner-up twice as well, but nobody three times in a row. At the seventh, this is David Toms for a birdie three. Well, David Toms, who hung in there quite well in the last group with Tiger yesterday. Nice show. He's alone in fourth right now at 11 under par. Right after our broadcast from St. Andrews, we'll take you to the beautiful Irish Hills of Michigan, Brooklyn, Michigan, for the Michigan 500. Indy 500 champ Juan Montoya facing Kart's best. That's coming up next here on ABC Sports. Back to six, Mr. Melnick. All right, Michael. It has been an interesting sort of day for Duval. Had a long putt at the first, just skirted the edge. A long putt at the fourth, skirted the edge. And the three putt for par at the last, which have bracketed the birdies at two and three. You could sense on the practice tee that both players relished his pairing. Now getting this downhill line, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, if we were on the hit a good full one of those middle, I mean the sand waves, it there's no reason it shouldn't hit right there and pop a little bit up, is there? It should do that, it should come up, yeah. 91? Yeah, yeah, 91's our front number. So hitting right there and popping up like is talking about this very deep little um, dip at the beginning of this green. located just about eight, ten feet um, past the crest of that dip. 106. Don't hit on the down slope. as well as you can play it. David, who has had a most unusual professional career, was 0 for 86, then won 11 of his next 31, and now hasn't won since Atlanta last year. And now Woods. Yardage seems a little silly, but it is 48 yards. He has been wonderful at this, although he struggled at the last. Has played a putter for his second shot here every day. been the problem you don't want to leave it short in the swale so most people play long and we will return with more final round coverage of 129th british open presented by mastercard after this message and a word from our abc stations you're watching the 129th british open on abc sports duval with a chance to close the gap Early in the year, his putting was spotty. He said he was so worried about mechanics and not about the speed of the putt when he quit worrying about what the stroke looked like. Started making some putts. Now, before David, Woods a long way away from the back of the green. That left for par. And now live for par. Oh. 
tell you, it has been Duval who has put the pressure on. David really hasn't missed a shot today. It has been Woods that's played not quite as sharp as before. In fact, he struggled going out on these first six or seven holes each day, it seems. Up ahead at nine. At the par four, Ernie Elts, birdie putt. Hello. Thought he'd done it, Mike. That uh, would have that would have been for 31 on the way out, Peter. Now we might end up with 33. Ernie Elts sitting at uh, 12 under par. Tiger with the lead at 17 under. That lead is now four. Mr. Alice is back off to describe the action for the conclusion of the championship on the BBC. Peter, we'll see you next week at the Senior British Open. You will indeed. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Curtis Strange back with us as the last group comes to the seventh. Give us a look at this 388-yard par four. Well, this is one of the crossover holes. Seven is a little dog leg to the right, just a slight little dog leg to the right. Players, once again, it's another blonde tee shot. There you see the seventh hole crossing with the 11th hole to par three. And players will drive in the flat area that you see right short of the big bunker. Land up of the big bunker. Players could drive this green if it wasn't for the deep pit right there. <laughs> and a big swale in front of this screen as there are in a lot of these greens here right here and then the flag stick just over top of today tough hole location there you see the swale and the slopes and the greens a gigantic bunker known as the shell bunker duval within four You would want to get as close as you could to that bunker today so you can hit a little bump and run because this flag stick just on top. Once again, so hard to get it close because then you have to challenge the slope, but if you don't get it up, you come all the way back with a chance for bogey. You heard what Steve said, and just in watching at home, David Duval looks the sharper of these two players for the first third of this round. Because he's made a few putts. Tiger has looked okay from tee to green. He just hadn't made any putts. Missed the two makeable putts in the first two holes. And then the short putt, but he's playing as solid as he has all week. Four pars here all week. There it is as it goes bounding. So Tiger in the fairway at seven. And let's skip ahead. One to the end. And David Thomas putting for a birdie two at the first of the two par threes. Said he enjoyed his round with Tiger yesterday as he makes his two. Had never played in, so in front of so many people. He said it was uh, a fantastic experience. Well, wait until today. Because <laughs> there's more out there today. Record attendances this week at the 129th Open Championship. And you can see there, Duval with that fantastic birdie at the six. Sneaks within four of Tiger Woods. Bobby Jones returned to St. Andrews for the last time in 1958 when he was paid a singular honor. He was granted the freedom of the city. The only American prior to Jones who was so honored was Benjamin Franklin. Jones's acceptance speech has never been forgotten here. I could take out of my life everything except my experiences at St. Andrews, and I still have a rich full life. Thank you. Back at the British Open, David Duval is four back, set to play his second at the seventh. From 108, and the lie is just like nipping the ball off of a tabletop with a sand wedge. Been impressive. Three under for the day, now Woods. Caught just a little beginning of an upslope. It was 84 yards. <laughs> He's 
Ball will have the better birdie opportunity here at the seventh. Let's go ahead to the tenth. Ernie L. second shot at this very short par four. Chipping it from a very tight line. We tend to want to think about how long he hits it, but he's got a great touch around the greens. All in all, not bad at all from there. That's the beauty of the crowds here. They know, they appreciate, they respect a good shot. Well, here at the old course in St. Andrews, Scotland, the final round of the 129th British Open. The story coming in was Tiger Woods leading by six. Would it be just a walk in the park? Well, some of the best in the world were on his heels and made an early statement that they were going to get close. Ernie Elks with a birdie at one and then a birdie at the third. On top of that, birdies at four and five. Four under 32 on the front has moved him to within five of Woods. David Duval in that same final group with Tiger has shown at every opportunity that he wasn't going to back down. When he hit this second at the second, with Tiger already having knocked one close, Duval got even closer. He made his birdie. Tiger did not, so David was within four. Birdie at the third as well, and chance for three in a row at the fourth. This wasn't really a putt you were thinking he had a great chance of making, but he hit a terrific putt. So that comes close at the fourth, and the frustrated Duval knew he hit a good putt. At the fifth, the par five, that short birdie putt miss could come back to haunt him when all is said and done. But he did not pout, didn't slouch, wasn't unhappy, came right back and rolled in a birdie three at the sixth. Three under for the day. As for Tiger, Curtis said it before, his ball striking's been fine. Putts haven't dropped at the first. Thought it was going to go in the other direction. Missed a birdie putt. After a par at one, this for birdie at two. Didn't make there. As a matter of fact, par the first three holes. Lone birdie of the opening six holes coming at the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. And it got him to 17 under par. At that point, five clear of Duval. But David birdied the last. He is closer to the hole than Tiger at seven. Here's Woods live at the seventh with this birdie putt. Down the hill. No, no, no. <laughs> One of the things the players do, we'll get back to that in a moment. Ten. Els already four under on his round. He's yeah. birdied this hole every day of the championship. And perhaps Gary when he needs it most. Walks away with par. The first three names on the leaderboard, Woods, Duval, Else, ranked one, two, three in the world. Back at seven. And they're playing at that level. What were you saying, Curtis? Well, with all the double greens, one of the players do, and they do this subconsciously, is when they play like the seventh, this is shared with the 11th green. When they walk up, they look exactly where the flag stick is on the 11th green. The same thing with... 13 and 5 and so on and so on so but I tell you with Duvall and any of these players that think they're going to challenge here they have to make a serious serious run right here in the loop 7 being a short hole 8 playing pretty easily today the short par 3 9 10 is drivable they have to birdie maybe 3 of the 4 holes on the loop Tiger did tap in for his par so now it's just Duvall here on 7 with a chance to get within 3 There you see, this is where the flag stick goes on the seventh hole, and there it is on the eleventh hole. Not too far, not too mm -hmm. far from each other today. And once again, going out, the flag sticks, the flags are yellow, coming back in on the backside, they're red. It's a pretty simple putt, just slightly downhill, moving from the right. Short holes to go as well. If Tiger doesn't birdie, the game is on. 
David Duval has just quietly walked out and hung out four birdies. Just missed one on four. Should have had one on five. This is where we're talking about St. Andrews. Such a unique setup. You have six holes go straight out, and then you have the loop right here, and then starting at 12, they come straight in to course 18, makes a little bit of a left turn into the clubhouse. So wonderful, wonderful layout that stood the test of time for many, many years. And a lot of history has been made out on that loop, and perhaps more today. What a charge by David Duval! He's birdied four of the first seven, is within three, and now they come to the eighth, and here's Ian. Yes, David Duval has been unbelievable the last three holes. Just imagine if he'd hold that putt for eagle at the par five. We would really have had ourselves a contest. But now he sneaks within three. We've been talking a lot about the players that haven't won major championships. David Duval, Phil Mickelson, Colin Montgomery, the best players in the world to have not won major championships. And for those players playing against Tiger Woods in this next era, it was sort of like when Jack Nicklaus was making all his wins in major championships. Those players that had to play against Jack probably uh, would have won more had they had the opportunity, had they been playing against someone else. I know Bruce Crampton was mentioned earlier he had four second place finishes and majors, four of them to Jack Nicklaus. And all of these guys are in that same situation here playing against Woods. They may have a career 10 years on with a lot of second place finishes to Tiger Woods. Now, Ian, where would Bruce Crampton be from? Uh, he's uh, an Antipodean, Curtis. <laughs> he's from Australia. <laughs> but he really was a great player. He was day. that. He was that. As you can see by all of this, a very important club selection here at par 3. Whole location just 10 paces on the green. Very deep bunker guarding that flag. Yeah, I mean, if, if the flight's up in the air, it'll, the window will definitely... Uh, this is the first time today that there is um, any wind um, hurting a shot back into the player's face, just cornering from the left. It's 155 yards. Put a seven iron back in the bag, took out a six. Ian, you told me on the practice tee this morning that if he was in doubt, he was always going to take extra club and swing smooth because of his back. I think he's been doing that most times, hasn't he, Steve? With the back not feeling as strong as it normally does, always better to take a smoother swing with more club. Most of the players leaving their shot to the right of the hole here. Very hard to be left. You know, it's not like it's straight in. There is some on the left, so I think a nice firm seven would be fine. Judy, I think you made the best point here in the fact that they've gone the first seven holes in a right to left breeze now they get to this eighth tee and they change direction it's hard to get used to that left to right breeze into your left cheek well and you sometimes have to play a hole or two um, to really have a good gauge but as Greg Rita said it is not right into him it comes quarters from the left put the seven iron in his hand again He was probably two or three yards too short for the edge of the bunker on the down slope. And it shot it way over towards the 10th flag stick. I had the perfect vantage point, Ian, and it just hung up there in the wind. And Curtis mentioned earlier about this, uh, this loop. And just have a look at this from the holes 8 through 14 tiger woods is 12 under par this is where you need to make those birdies in this loop 7 through 11 and then the 12th the short par 4. seven iron for tiger oh, 
Very good shot. I know it's 40 feet away, but it was a safe one. That's what he's been doing all week. Play to the fat of the green. And as they walk up to the eighth green, we'll return with more final round coverage of the 129th British Open, presented by MasterCard, after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the 129th Open Championship on ABC Sports. While we were away, we recorded this, Duval's long-range birdie attempt at the eighth green. You can see there he got a vicious kick off the downslope of the front bunker. And he went on to make that, tapped it in for a par three to remain at 14 under. And we're back live. There's a good view of what Curtis was talking about. The tenth is here in the foreground. And way over on the left is where Tiger's putting to the eighth. You know, Ian Tiger, it's not time to panic yet. He has to stay in his game plan. I still think so. You have to, you have to keep reminding yourself you still have a three-shot lead. Although it's gone from five, down to three, got up to six, now down to three. Don't panic yet. Do what you know what you can do. He has to always remember, too, he has the drivable 10th, the drivable 12th, the par 5, 14, he can knock it on it, too. So. But David Duvall is thinking just the opposite. Yeah, David Duvall is thinking, I've made up three already in eight holes. Came up well short on his putt at the sixth green. He's done the same again here. Maybe just holding on a little. You know, we talk time and time again about the first thing to me goes when you're uptight and nervous is the speed of your putts. Mm -hmm. So first thing I always had trouble doing, you can hit drives, you can chip, you can do a lot of things. And he's had trouble with the speed the last two or three holes. I think you always find you get into trouble when you try and two putt. That's when you have difficulty with yep. your first one. You always putt best when you're trying to hold them. And I always felt myself that whenever I started to think about the pace of greens or how hard was I going to hit this putt, I knew someone was messing with me in my mind. That was a tension reaction. Three. Good three there for Tiger. Remains at 17 under. Three shot lead with 10 holes to play. We'll go ahead to the drivable par four, the tenth. David Tom, second. He laid way back, has 115 yards into this hole. He's, he is on a string of four consecutive birdies and suddenly finds himself all alone in third place. To 11. This is Ernie Els for a par at the par three. costly mistake for Els. That drops him back to 11 under. He really had something going early. He had four birdies in the first five holes. We thought he was going to do something special to 18. And John Vandeveld's second shot. Bogey at 16 and 17. He's one over for the day. 18 at the British Open on Sunday. A little kinder to Vandeveld than it was 52 weeks ago. He's at four under. That's tied for 32nd. He's handled the week, a difficult week at that, with class and grace, the way he's handled the last 12 months since the disaster across the North Sea at Carnoustie a year ago. Paul Laurie, who won the championship there, didn't make the cut here this week, by the way. Now we're back at the ninth. Par four, 352 yards, and Duval, who's cut Tiger's lead in half from six to three in the first eight holes, has the honor. Good head. Thank you. Thank you. Very flat hole, flat green. Players will just lay up short of the two bunkers or the f one bunker you see there. 266 to that bunker. This has been a hole where Tiger Woods has had success all week. Three threes on the par four.
Uh, yeah. Huge divot. Both with the same idea, both with a similar result, and avoiding the minefield of divots in the area where the players have laid up with irons all week. Well, Tiger Woods had a six-shot lead to start the day. It's still a comfortable lead. It's three. And with all the history and pressure on the line, it's a little more tense than it was a few hours ago at St. Andrews. David Toms in an area the local call the Wispies. Still going to put it, though. He laughed about his pairing yesterday, that of course with Tiger Woods, and said he enjoyed it. He'd never seen so many people. When he grew up in Shreveport, there weren't quite this many people watching him when he played golf. Tonight, David is ready for his second shot. He'll play a little shot, keep it under this wind that's back into him from 121 with a nine iron. Judy, this is the wind at St. Andrews is always a damp, heavy wind. The ball doesn't travel very far in it. I think there's just a touch more wind at the moment than at any time this week. Um, uh, it's not significant, but maybe just a little bit more of a factor. Oh, don't fall right. Oh, God. Good distance. A little pick me up from his caddy, Greg Rita, try to reinforce something positive out of the shot David would have liked to have been a little bit finer. And not a bad shot, but at this stage of the game, it can't do anything but go right down the flag stick. Tiger second. Tiger from 112, and he will play a similar shot with a pitching wedge. Let it get up a lot higher. Down. 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 Came down behind the flag stick. As Woods was begging for it to get down on the putting surface, one of the, actually the flattest putting surface here at St. Andrews, here at the ninth. Let's take you forward three, the par four, twelfth, and Ernie Elts on the tee of a 314-yard hole. Don't think he can reach today even with his best. This has gotten away. You heard him say four right. That's dead, Curtis. That's right in the middle of the gorse. Made double here yesterday with a similar mistake. Coming off a of bogey, he's 11 under. We go back to 10. Tom's this little putt for par and remain in third place. That was a moment ago. And now Tom moves. To 11. And there you can see him. It's just off the edge of the left edge of the 10th green, this 11th tee. Tom's playing alongside Lauren Roberts, who won in Milwaukee last week. There's a view of the 11th flag. Huge deep bunker in front of that green called Strath Bunker. Further back towards the tee, the big shell bunker that you cross with your second shot at seven. Judy said the wind is up a little, making this hole, I think, play a little tougher. Bozier City, Louisiana, 33-year-old Toms. Was the only American last year in the top 10 in the money list that didn't make the Ryder Cup team. He only had three top 10s in any year on tour coming into last year where he had seven top 10s, two wins. Going with an eight iron. Anywhere short of the hole is a bad, badly misjudged shot. And that is a very quick putt back down the hill from about 60 feet. I think that experience playing with Tiger yesterday has done this young man well. Let's head back to nine. It's an experience David Duval's not blinking from at all. You talk about the Ernie Elses and the Davis Loves and talk about taking on the challenge of going head-to-head -head with number one. There's no intimidation of this pairing for David Duval, and it's shown here in the early going. 
Birdie putt. Hit it. Hit it right. Decent amount coming back for par. Well, remember, David Duvall has been number one in the world for, what, 15 weeks? Mm -hmm. Two different times, 14 in one week. And so he's no stranger to this situation. You talk about number one, number two in the world. For those not initiated, it's not a poll like college football and the voting. It's no. a very complex system that would take far too long to explain. But essentially, all players around the world are judged by how good the field is in a tournament. This tournament is a really high-weighted because you have the best in the world playing. The BC Open, which is being played back in the States right now, won't carry as much juice as this event does. And it's over a 24-month span. The last 12 months count the most. That's why David Duval was number one after his stretch of 11 wins and 34 starts and why Tiger has surpassed him with this phenomenal stretch that he has right now. If Tiger goes on and wins here, it will be his sixth win in 13 starts this year. It's a pretty good batting average. Mm. In any sport, and virtually unheard of in recent times in this sport. And this is for a lead of four. Pretty flat putt, maybe just a little bit from the right. Very makeable. talking about Tiger and what he was going for today in addition to everything else a sixth win in 13 starts this is since turning professional 23 wins of his 88 starts it's phenomenal it's unheard of really in today's time somebody to dominate the best players in the world like he has he has more wins in this short time as a professional than most of the best players of this generation most of the active almost all the active players on the pga tour well, remember he's playing the best fields all the time he's playing the tough tournaments all the time now a very important putt david duvall from four feet for par yeah. good okay. save and a great front nine except the front nine he needed to play he needed to get something going. He did that. He made a few putts like he did yesterday. But this ninth hole would have been a good one to get to because it's not a hard hole. Old well, Tigers birdied all week until a par today. So Woods out in one under 35. Duval out in four under 32. A six stroke lead on the first tee is a three shot lead as they move to the 10th tee. Well, let's take a look at the drivable 10th hole for Tiger Woods anyway, and I think David Duvall can probably get close. Two bunkers on the right you want to stay away from. And there's a huge swale in front again. Green rolls from right front to back left. Not a lot, but just a gentle little slope. Today's flag stick all the way in the back center, just behind those arrows. And remember, this hole being drivable, but they added 37 yards to it since the last open here in 95. It's played downwind and drivable all week long. That has been the old tee where they're just passing right now, the new tee 37 yards back. There's Greg Rita kind of giving David the indication of where the wind is here at 10. We all know about Tiger's early major record, but few remember that Duval at age 18 qualified for the U.S. Open at Medina, made the cut and played terrific until Sunday. There's a new tee we talked about. Two years later as an amateur playing college golf at Georgia Tech, was tied for the league going to the last round in the Atlanta Golf Classic. USGA Junior Champion, four-time an All-American at Georgia Tech. Only one person has stood between him and being number one in the world.
Looking right. And just hopped over Mrs. Kruger's bunker and just missed the Kruger bunker and got away with a wayward shot. He will look back and think that was perhaps a one, possibly two shot lucky break. I think David struggles when he tries to hit it hard because of the back problems that we've talked about, but this man doesn't have any problem going all out. Seems that the harder he swings it, the straighter it goes. Steve, I think this is where Tiger will have an advantage on the way in. He can drive this hole much easier than, than David. 12, he can do the same thing, and then back into a little crosswind, his length will, you know, if he drives it straight, will certainly be an advantage over David Duvall. I think this may qualify as a launch. This is huge. He drove it on yesterday and three-putted, but he's put it on yet again and made it look easy. 379 yards. Woods safely on, but Duval got a great break. His ball floating to the right, skirting the bunkers on the right. Remember, these are all newly revetted bunkers, steep wall bunkers, hops right over the edge of that one. I mean, by a matter of six inches, he avoids being almost in jail here at 10. This is how you hit it, 379 yards. Watch one thing, watch the torque and the stretch at the top of the swing and then on the way down. I'd suggest don't try that at home. <laughs> you might hurt yourself. That yep. is truly a great and perfect golf swing, I think. Grip, posture, ball position, alignment, perfect. You add to it the strength, and it is fundamentally the, the most perfect swing in golf today. This is what David Duval narrowly averted. The ball landed short, hit in the just at the top of the side wall bunker. If he hits there, he, he may not even be able to play forward. He may have to come out backwards as it is now. He's got a fairly straightforward pitch. Judy, what's he got? Steve, I think he has a shot that he would like to putt, but he has um, just a little patch of rough about 10 feet in front of this ball and a couple of little sprigs that stand up straight that, that could affect a ball rolling, um, could slow it, could knock it um, seriously offline. It is 130 feet of putting surface. As we watch Tiger, he, he has made driving par force here almost commonplace. Knocked it over 12 consistently this week the other really short par four and it's a good thing they added 37 yards of length to this 10th hole you have to hit a three way like you know can get much air under the ball you're kind of leaning towards uh if you couldn't clearly hear that david was talking about how tight the lie is how tough it would be to pitch the ball and uh Catch it cleanly. While we wait, let's go to 14. And this is the second par five on this golf course. We recorded this for you. Freddie Couples at eight under par, third shot. Thank you very much. I told you that was the perfect place to leave it, Joe. Just leave it about 60 yards short. Easy little pitch up the bank. That was a great shot. To 10. When Duval does practice at home, it's mostly his short game. Very seldom does he work on any 
parts of his long game, but it's the short game that's gotten so much better. After the first five or six yards of green, the green gently runs away from the player. Good effort. Displaying continued great touch here. This is not something you can practice. While we have a minute, let's take a look at some scores here. Thomas Bjorn has joined David Toms at 12 under. Ernie Els took an unplayable lie at the 12th and still made par, so the 12th doesn't do to him today what it did yesterday. Couples with a great pitch in for the Eagle at 14. Paul Azinger out quickly this morning, went out and shot 30 on the front. Finished 67 and 8 under par. Steve paid a nice round today, 68, finished at 6 under. Monty still looking to appease those critics who say maybe this is a tournament he won't win. He has only a top, two top 10 finishes, an eighth his best here. Falda, who is playing on good form, simply couldn't put it together on the weekend. And the rest of those players who made the cut here. Dudley Hart, one player who made the cut, had to withdraw, or as they say over here, he retired. Could not go the third round. And three players over 50 made the cut here. Tom Kite, Tom Watson, and Mr. O'Connor. But Tiger Woods looking to complete the Grand Slam, the youngest player ever. But it is David Duval who has a lot to say for that outcome. Judy, how far away for Tiger? I got to think this is uh, just inside of 100 feet um, on, a, on a similar line that David's ball just rolled. So um, I don't think there's a lot of question about the um, turns of this putt, uh, just the speed. Curtis, your point well taken. The pace of his putts has been off all day. Well, that type of putt, just like David Duvall's long pitch and run, you just don't ever practice it at home. You just you can't find a surface to practice that type of shot at home because it's so much softer. So, you know, it's still, even though these guys have been practicing for six days, it's still foreign, and it, it, they're not as, as good as they probably would be if they lived over here. While we wait, let's move up ahead to 11. Thomas Bjorn putting for a birdie. There's only been two here all day. And I think you can tell by that putt the reason why. Huge swing. Hole location right at the front of the green. Almost impossible to get it close to that hole from the tee. And almost impossible to putt. Two under so far today. Back to ten. David Duval playing in the final group for the second time in a major this year. Played with Vijay Singh in the final round of the Masters. David finished four back in third place. And now all the David's thinking, if I can get this in, I was looking at going, you know, losing a shot on the hole. I might gain a shot on the hole. the jar. 
Well, when you think that he narrowly avoided disaster, you can't be too disappointed with par there. No, but leaving it short from 15 feet is, is really the cardinal sin at this stage of the game. Yep. When the day began, Woods' lead was six. It is now three, but a chance to give him just a little bit more comfort as he heads home. When he won the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, these putts were a given. And that 15-stroke margin made so because I don't think I've ever seen a man in major championship competition make so many putts of this length. Well, he'd have still won if he didn't make all the putts, but he did make a lot. <laughs> and these were just about gimmies the first two days, two and a half days as well. The hardest putts to read at St. Andrews are those that look the straightest. you roll it like that. Not that he needs any more self-confidence, but that's a big boost. Drove it on the green yesterday, three-putted. Drove it on the green today, converted. It seems that he continues to have destiny on his shoulder. Tiger Woods scoring records. The Masters 18 under. The U.S. Open 12 under. He is now tied Faldo at 18 under. And you see the PGA record which Price and Love hold. And let's go to 11. Thanks Steve. I can tell you a, a little story about this 11th hole that was back when the great Bobby Jones was a highly talented but highly volatile 19 year old he first came here to St Andrews and he really didn't like Lynx golf and it was because of this hole coming up I've told you many times about the nasty bunkers surrounding this green and Jones in the third round took 46 for the first nine holes double bogeyed the tenth and then had four angry swipes at his ball in the very deep hill bunker on the left side of this green and picked up his ball, tore up his scorecard, and walked in. And he has said many times that that sudden outburst of anger changed his life and changed his career forever. There's the shell bunker, the big one, Strath bunker in front, and over to the left of the green, as they walk to the 12th, there's a very deep, hidden little bunker in there called Hill Bunker. And you won't see many people in there today because it's nowhere near the flag, but just down in there, there's a little bit of history. The great Bobby Jones said it changed his career. Now another great man playing the same hole. Tiger with a 9-iron. Has to play away from the deep bunker just in front of the flagstick. Few players are able to even get it out if you put it in there. Started out to the right of the flagstick. The wind's oh. moving it back left. Oh. And once again, a good conservative shot. He hit it into the middle of the green, past that bunker. It's a difficult putt, but he is on the surface. Ten past it. That nine is. That should be a good stick, David. It's so hard in your mind to think that you fit a good shot to 45 feet. Welcome to St. Andrews, though. <laughs> now, even David Duvall, I don't think, can be but too aggressive here. You know, maybe try to fly it at the flagstick and hopefully it doesn't hit hard, but I just don't think he can play right on top of the bunker. Oh, cool! 
Good shot. As he said, that was as aggressive as he could get. That's an excellent shot. Well, we'll return with more final round coverage of the 129th British Open presented by MasterCard after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the 129th Open Championship on ABC Sports. We're back live at the 11th green and Tiger Woods putting for a birdie two. Duval in the background there looking on. He'll walk over quickly and try and get some sort of read as, as this putt gets closer. Well, that game was really fast down the slope. It's a good lag putt. Just as it was from the tee, somewhere to the safe part of the green was the wise play, and just a lag putt down the slope was the correct way to do it there. Well, no mistakes from here on in, and it's pretty much a foregone conclusion, but there are some holes remaining that are pretty tough. One, the 17th hole, obviously. Everybody has to get through that. I know it's difficult for David Duvall or any challenges to make a lot of birdies coming in, but there are plenty of pot bunkers, at which he has yet to hit one in. Duvall had a great 8-iron in here to the 11th. If he could hold this putt, maybe knock it on the 12th, knock it on the 14th, the reachable par 5, make a couple of birdies or perhaps an eagle, apply some pressure so that there is some pressure on as they get to the 17th. We've seen some fantastic stories evolve at the road hole, if that's the right word, over the years. But David got a good look at how much Tiger's ball broke, and a lot of times you pay attention, but it really doesn't help or hurt you. But I think it helped him here. That's We've seen two or three putts miss low. Down the hill, big swinger from the right. This looks good. Very hard to hit it any firmer than that to hold it on its line. Difficult putt to try and hold without being stupid and hitting it eight foot by. And we talked about disasters that can happen at the 17th hole. Let's go and take a look at this and just show you that it's not over yet. Don't put down your glasses just yet. This is Sergio Garcia. He has to putt it back into the center of the bunker so he can get his next shot out. This is the sand cam. This is embedded in the wall, the sod wall. It's called revetting or revetted face. Wonderful touch, great hands. And that was yesterday. Sergio Garcia. Oh, and here he is again. This is today. It doesn't look too good. Sitting right up against the wall. Oh, that's a beauty. You know what's helped those pot bunkers and players to play out of them over the years is a 60-degree wedge that was developed some years ago. It really makes it easier to get under the ball and get the ball up in a hurry. Well, back at 11, Tiger tapped in for his par, and they are now over at the 12th tee. With the margin at four, this hole plays 314 yards. Alphabetically run through the scores. Number on the left is their position in the field amongst the 73 playing here today. Tide is out. The estuary, Eden Estuary back there. We've seen a dozen players. Stand very still, please. Hey, hang on, mate. We're ready to go, yeah? <laughs> a dozen players get here today. Yeah, 13 after the last group came through at the 12th. He's been just over the back of the green two days, um, a little bit long and right yesterday, but has made three threes. You're the man, Tiger! Fuck's down! 
This one started well left. Go! It did go and got past whatever trouble might be there. Tigers long enough. He takes you to Gorse right in the background. That is trouble. Ernie Els hit it right in there yesterday. That's trouble for everybody, but Tiger and his length doesn't have to worry about it. He carries the stuff. Carries it, bounces through the back of the green, actually on the back edge. Drove another green. 17. We saw Sergio in the road bunker. Hit that wonderful shot out to here. This for a par. The smart players today will play long at the 17th. Great four. Back at 12. Good ball, baby. Duval has the length as well. And that'll just fade off to the right side from the player's perspective. That's a good shot for Duval. They're at 12. They're on the 12th tee. Tiger Woods leads by four, heading toward history. Doug Sanders had this short putt to win the 1970 Open on the old course. The BBC announcer Henry Longhurst in his singularly clipped style, described the scene this way. And so now, this is it. And this is what people dream about, that you've got this one with a left-hand borrow downhill on the last green at St Andrews to win the Open. Missed it. Yeah, certainly. Yes, that's the side you're bound to miss. And there it is. And there, but for the grace of God, that miss enabled Jack Nicholas to tie Doug Sanders. Nicholas won the play. Back at the 12th, David Duval has put his sweater on as the sun has disappeared behind the building clouds, and it's turned cooler. It has turned cooler, but that's to protect his back, to keep that warm as well. David fighting a back injury this week. He and Greg Rita surveying what's ahead here on this 12th. Duval four behind Tiger Woods. Got as close as three at the turn, but Woods birdied the 10th. If you missed some of the early portions of the show, have to step out perhaps later this afternoon at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, or even if you want to relive it again. The highlights of this final day of the British Open, presented by MasterCard. 60 minutes. Might be a good thing to set the VCR for if the expected history does take place in the next couple of hours. David's ready to take a ride here with his second shot at number 12. There's a lot of little things to read here. A lot of undulation. I'm just trying to get it just over the home. Sprinkler, sprinkler head. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. You like that line all right? Yeah. And then, you know, think about gauging that speed, uh, uh, gauging that speed to get up that hill and right. try and get in at that, you know, just right of the pin. The last hill, about 18 feet short of the hole, um, should take the ball a little bit to the left, and it is very steep. This is where when you have so many, look at all the mounds between he and the big slope, just short of the flagstick. This is where it's so difficult to read the speed and the line. I would maybe carry it as far as I could, maybe just in this position and then let it run up the right. hill. There's so many little things right here. Very tough to judge. Get up. Go. Stay there. Stay. The frustration that goes along with the charm of St. Andrews. A green you can drive it to, but it doesn't mean you're in great shape. St. Andrews years ago, Alistair McKenzie, the old famous architect, wrote that once you got to the green, half the job was 
just done. Mm -hmm. When they had putting up these mounds and slopes, the greens obviously were very, very slow back then. That was as challenging as hitting a 200-yard draw back then. And it still is. McKenzie came back here in 30, looked around the place and said, it should, it could, you should be able to play St. Andrews with a putter from the first tee to the 18th hole. It's some of the unique features of this place. And they can this year. It hasn't changed at all. Well, Tiger Woods leads by four. We've told you the major storyline of the week and the day is Tiger trying to become the youngest player to win the modern career Grand Slam. Youngest in Tiger Woods has gone together for years. And go back to when he was growing up in Cypress, California, 35 miles southeast of L.A. He watched his dad hitting balls when he was sitting in the crib as a six-month-old, and that's the swing he learned to imitate. They're asking the referee to determine who's farthest away of us who plays next. Um. When Tiger was two, he was on the Mike Douglas show with Bob Hope, putting, youngest to do that then. He shot 48 when he was three years old. He started winning tournaments when he was eight, so he's been the youngest at every phase of his life at success as a golfer. So if he's the youngest to win the modern career Grand Slam today, it's just going to be the next youngest in a long line. That's John Paramore, the official with the group, stepping off to see who is away. You made a point earlier this week when talking about the youngest and this chart and the path the Tiger is paving here. So many of the players now who are coming out as these young stars, we've seen four amateurs in the field, all young stars, and they seem to be more talented and better and competing at a higher level earlier on. They're following the trail that he's set. Absolutely, and, and you know, they're fundamentally sounder than, than they used to be. They're, you know, videotaped. They all have their own personal coaches at an early age. Now, some people disagree with that. Some people say that will burn a kid out. But those who don't burn out, like a Tiger Woods, because of that instruction at an early age, all that competition, you will be better at an earlier age, at 20, 25. Keeping him from burning out is the burning desire to keep chasing Jack Nicklaus. This is his second, an eagle putt at 12. shot lead that's just fine that's fine anytime because it's not an easy putt up a slope some 45 feet or so skip your head one to the 13th thomas bjorn for birdie at this very difficult par four 430 yards back into the wind and he's played himself back into contention in third place two under on his round 12 under it all as we go back to 12. And David Duval, who in his own right was a great college player, a four-time first-team All-America at Georgia Tech. He got instruction early on, his dad being a club pro and growing up in the business, growing up on the golf course. This was the first time all day that um, when any little thing didn't turn just right that I saw a real frustration with David. Uh, uh, that little second shot there really upset him. Judy, don't you think by realization of, of not winning or not really giving him a being closer at this stage is setting in right now? Well, um, he certainly knows at this point that he's running out of holes and he can't let Tiger Birdie um, anywhere that he doesn't do the same. Remember, Tiger at the PGA Championship last year led by five with seven holes to play on the 12th tee. But Garcia wasn't in the same group as he made his charge a little bit ahead. Here they're eyeball to eyeball, a match play situation with L's in third at 11 under. Go! Go! Well, it has become too true that that is a very steep slope. This is the first hole that you could say David has not played this hole well. And it may be the one that ends the day for his hopes. 14. David Tom, second shot here at the par 5. At 265 to the hole. Breeze getting very heavy. It's getting wet and cold out here. 
just avoiding the two grave bunkers they're called just short of the green and not a bad spot there he's got a, a bank to come up about 45 feet away for an eagle three we've already seen two eagles here today lucas parsons from australia and freddie couples just a few groups before we'll head back to 12. still duval his putt for par you saw when tom's hit that shot the double green but only one flag that's one nice thing about being in the last few groups you don't have that other flag out there on the green this is what's so frustrating when you play against tiger you know you keep hate to keep blowing his horn but every time you turn around he's doing something that somebody else isn't doing dave duval has, has made a couple of mistakes he missed the three putt of the fifth hole of the par five when it looked like he was going to gain one maybe two on tiger uh, didn't birdie nine, uh, ten, almost driving the green, and now this 12 footer for par at the short 12. And if he doesn't make it, we could be looking at a two shot swing when you're down four with holes running out. Two shot swing and pretty much game set and match. Just little mistakes you cannot make when you're playing a guy like Tiger Woods right now. And I'm sure they said the same thing years ago against Jack Nicklaus. Mm -hmm. So he'll drop one here at 12. And Tiger's lead could once again Get to six. David's going to mark. You know, we talked about Tiger and the youngest to do a whole bunch of stuff. The hype was so huge for Tiger Woods. You think of people in the past. In baseball, David Clyde was a great pitcher who was going to be the next best. In basketball, Felipe Lopez in high school was a magazine cover boy. In football, Todd Marinovich. They were all going to be the best in their sport, and none of them even came close to living up to the hype. In the era of ESPN, the internet, more magazines, more hype of high school performers and amateurs, he's not only lived up to the hype, he has far exceeded it. The NBA always talks about trying to find the next Michael Jordan. We have him. We have the next Michael Jordan in Tiger Woods. Tigers now at 19 under. He pars the rest of the way and he passes Nick Faldo's record at St. Andrews for an open. And we're back with more of the 129th British Open presented by MasterCard after this message and a word from your ABC station. You're watching the British Open on ABC Sports. Back at 13 where Tiger Woods is on track to fulfill his date with destiny. oohs and ahs is that just misses the coffins I want to, know those on TV. to 17. yes and speaking of bunkers here's freddie couples in the road bunker just to build the drama here for you anything can happen on this hole oh lovely shot there from fred couples he's at 10 under par coming into this hole four under on his round today you see Freddie playing well this week. But Woods already one beyond Faldo's 18 under par record here in the 90 Open. Well, two, could be two great American stories in sports in Europe in addition to Tiger here. Lance Armstrong has won the Tour de France in Paris. The ride down the Champs-Élysées today, the comfortable six-minute lead was maintained. He won by six minutes and two seconds. A little champagne was handed to him by a fan. Uh, Lance Armstrong on the platform, the champion of the Tour de France for the second consecutive year. And later, you can see on ESPN2 coverage of the ultimate stage of the Tour de France at 7 Eastern tonight and much more later in our ABC Wide World of Sports studio during the Michigan 500 and our British Open wrap-up. Congratulations to Lance Armstrong. A tremendous story again this year. Back to 13. A moment ago, a somewhat deflated Duval. 
He hits driver. He's got to go left. And that is in the bunker. Well, while we have a second, let's remind you that Saturday we're going to take you to Northern Ireland for a tremendous golf experience. The MasterCard Senior British Open. Gary Player will head the field at Royal County Down. Saturday and Sunday coverage on ABC. Tiger and company stop there on their way over to Scotland for the Open. Steve? Judy, what's the problems here? Uh, this is just a get-out shot. Um, I think he is... I'm just trying to, to pick a spot where he and a line where he would like to, to get this ball out of the bunker to set himself up for a third. Well, there are 112 bunkers here at the old course, all of which are penal, all of which have been rebuilt, and all of which elicit responses from players that I don't think we could repeat here. Not the least of which is what Duval must be thinking right now. 14. Now this is David Tom's birdie attempt. Oh, that was unlucky there, Rossi. I tell you, three putts from just off the fringe. Well, that's back killed to, him. Sorry, He's back to 13. Tiger set to play a second. Well, you'll see him crane his neck because he can only see the very, very top of the flag stick. Seven iron. From 156, that wind is from the left and back into him. There's plenty, plenty of room left of the flagstick. <laughs> Safe, but good. Knowing that his lead is now six, Duval in trouble here at 13. Why risk putting it in trouble by going at the flagstick? And Steve, we've all been in this position. I, you know, you hate to admit you've been in there more than once, but when you lose your, your chance to win or you're thinking, it really is, deflates you like no feel in the world. I mean, you, you almost don't want to finish for some reason because it's, you know, your whole psyche for, for weeks on end leading up to a major championship is to try to win and all of a sudden, the realization sits, sinks right in, and I think that's why we saw a, a poor tee shot and yeah. bad bout of body language right now. And even more so because he'd given great chase, had a chance to close the gap even more, and couldn't quite do it, and now look what happens. Judy is third. I think this is just a little eight iron. Well, makeable for his par, but the shortest par four on the course, the short 12th, derails Duval in his attempt to catch Tiger Woods. Back at 13, Tiger Woods for a birdie. He made a wonderful putt here yesterday for three. But right now, Parr is his best friend. 218. Fred Couples, who dropped a shot despite that spectacular shot out of the road hole bunker earlier. Parr here at the last. Freddie shoots 69. Good week for Couples, just at 72, even Parr yesterday. Looks like Fred mighty got another top 10 at the British Open. He's had seven before. Back to 13. If you know David, you know he has not given up hope, but you know that the two-shot swing at the last has to just gnaw at him when it's a par four that he can almost drive and then makes a mistake off the tee here. Woods advantage six. And David has to make this to maintain that deficit. Steve, his one chance would probably be to make this putt and some heroics here at the 14th. And you'd like to think that, that Woods might stub his toe, and yet the way he's played his course management has just been superb. Ah. 
So bogeys at 12 and now at 13. David drops to 12 under and the lead is seven and the engraver should be standing by. Let's go to 14. Well, let's go to 14, the par five. It's been reachable all week long and is today. The trouble and the way place you do not want to put it is the road on the right that's out of bounds. Most of the players are driving it well past the four bunkers on the left. I never could, though. After a good drive, players are just making sure they get over a hell bunker. The huge bunker you see right there in your picture. It is so big and so deep. Look at this. Look at the bank of the bunker. It's actually a beautiful thing. Not when you're in it, but it's really gorgeous to look at. And after a player will successfully carry the bunker, it's downhill from there. All the way to the green, and it is hard. It'll run, run, and run. Once again, there's a big swale, bottom, and then swale in front of this green. And the flag stick today is just center. Right over top of the big swale. There you see the arrows. A lot of different angles and moving into this green. And we're back at the tee and Tiger Woods has had 4-4-4 four, four, four on this hole this week. About to drive. You know, Finch, you were at a par 5 here. The Tiger plays so well. And you look at that scoreboard at 19 under. Did you ever think you'd see somebody who maybe could be 20 under in a major? Certainly not here, and certainly not in these type of conditions, but Tiger seems to uh, shift into another gear when it gets into the unusual situations, and that's what he's done over the last few holes. And he comes to this hole with such a, a commanding advantage on long par fives that he can get right up near the green in two, and really they're just like par fours. This was his second yesterday. Listen to this. Just a little 279-yard three-wood up onto the green. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> what a great working relationship between Tiger and his caddy, Steve Williams. Ian, that's when I felt like yesterday he really got momentum and it felt like he was going to win the golf tournament. He has such a huge advantage with length he can play conservatively on so many of the holes, but when he gets to a hole like this, or a hole like 12, he can just fly it on. A couple of putts for birdie. Well, if you're just joining us, Tiger Woods marching towards history. There was some question here for a little while. David Duval was four, three better than Tiger on the front. Got it two within three. But on the back nine, the putts that went in on the front didn't go in. At the 10th, just shot. Birdie at 11. No, and he stayed at 14 under. And then at the 12th, one of two back-to-back -back bogeys for Duval. They're driving it, but not getting it up on the proper tier. Leaving a putt short as well. And then another bogey at 13. Meantime, for Tiger as he made the turn. His six-shot lead to start the day now down at three. Ten and twelve, the holes where he has been so strong and the advantage built up for weeks. Sir Michael Benalek said after the U.S. Open, if he doesn't win, there should be a steward's inquiry because of holes like ten and twelve where Tiger's length and the prodigious drives would pay off the most. The drive there onto the tenth green. And a birdie to extend the advantage back to four. And on the 12th, worry for a second. It went past the gorse on the left. And it was hit with such height, it actually landed somewhat softly. And onto the putting surface, two putts from there would be another birdie. And would extend the lead to six at that point. As it finally came to rest after a good first putt, the birdie putt to get to 19 under par. He leads by seven. 
a boatload of records in his sight as he plays the last few holes and back to sand cam at 17. thank you mike and phil mickelson's in here and he looks like he has to play out sideways to the front there you go he's already left one in that's his second out of there and he's had to go out back towards the front right of the green with his fourth shot leave Mickelson there and head back to 14 and Mike you asked me about did I ever think anyone would get to 20 under I played in the last group with Nick Faldo in 1990 and Faldo finished at 18 under par and he maybe could have etched out one or two more the conditions were perfect he really was on top of his game but Tiger is really uh, strangling the course he's, he's he owns it it's a number we haven't seen in a major anyone at any point 20 under par well, I think we'll see it after this hole. Tiger with his second. Shot plays a little bit downhill. It's 286 yards, and the wind is definitely hurting. Just won't make it up the front bank, but he'll be putting for eagle. A couple of putts for a birdie four to get to that magical number of 20 under par. Woods currently leads by seven. Ernie Els, maybe he can finish second in his third major of the year. We'll be back shortly. We're back with Ernie Els, second shot at 17. Ernie knows the low route's the best one here. Go Ernie. Has to try and get it up, miss that bunker. Get it as far back as he possibly can. And that's a wonderful golf shot. Good call there, Gary. Good low running shot. Now, we're back at 14. Duval will be playing first. His third shot. Has another one from just the front right of this green that is um, up over a tremendous um, slope in the green, up a big, huge hill. When you try and get close to the flag in two here, or perhaps at 12 or 10 in one, this is what can happen to you. You leave it in the wrong place, and you leave yourself with an impossible pitch. I think what David has to do here, because of this slope right here, he has to try to fly it in this bottom right here and jump it up. I've had this identical shot many times, and it's just, you have so many slopes. Hey. Whoa. 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 One of the many things that you have to deal with out here at St. Andrews in the final group is because it's an out and then back in type of course, the people have nowhere to go. They're crossing in front of holes. They're, there's 40 to 50,000 people out there, plus lots of cameramen, lots of media people. Just so much going on. This was actually a disturbance um, over in front of the um, fourth green, the shared part of this green. As this ball gets up over this steep slope and this, this giant hump that takes you finally to the top of the surface, um, uh, it runs right away from them. So um, you really, really um, need a great touch to get this ball close. Cardinal sin here is to leave it short. Excellent shot. About 12 feet for birdie. To 18. At the finishing 357 yard par four. Check in on Phil Mickelson second. Made double back at the road hole. Out in 34. Actually just played kind of average this week for Phil Mickelson except for that nine holes he played on Friday afternoon. Shot 30 on the inward nine. Six on the card, he now stands at seven. So not his best showing. Like Montgomery, Mickelson's quest will move to Valhalla in the PGA Championship in August. Steve Williams tending the flag as Tiger has a look at this. 16 paces on the flag here today at 14. And a very steep bank in front, about four or five feet high, he has to come up. I think this is the steepest bank on the golf course. This is, <laughs> it's not 90 degrees, but it's almost. And as it gets over the top, it really runs away. It's, he just needs to get it just over, and it'll make it all the way to the hole. Three, two, three, two. 
Well, he nearly reached 21 under par there, Mike. He's got to just a tap in to get to that magical number. Unbelievable touch. Clotilda, his mum. The uh, emotional moment for her. <laughs> She's been through a lot of emotional moments, I'm sure. And a great support. Tiger's marked his coin away to get it out of the line of Duval here, who has this for a birdie four. And even though he knows his chance, unless something dramatic happens, has gone for the win, second's better than third. Still, I think that adrenaline that was running a couple of holes ago, that emotion that was running a couple of holes ago, that he had an outside chance. Um, it's certainly different now. And so many chances just slipping by. A five at the twelfth, a five at thirteen, and a five at fourteen. <laughs> it feel like three drop shots. Did you notice there, right before he got up out of the hole, he no motion to Tiger. Move, move the coin back. It's great sportsmanship. And the etiquette of the game of golf. We've had so many champions of the etiquette before us. Arnold Palmer, one of them I can mention. Jack Nicklaus. And Tiger Woods, for a young man, I think is going to carry on that tradition. Well done, 20 under par with four holes to play in the 129th playing of the Open Championship. And I think the engraver is more than just standing by right now, Mr. Melnick. I think he's uh, about to put needle to the old claret jug. Now we're at the 17th. Ernie Ells for birdie three after that fantastic second shot. Gary, how's Ernie played? Has he been playing well all day, just can't get them in? He's played so well, but he has not made anything on the putting green. He didn't take advantage of the loop on a, on a day, really, when the course was set up for the chasers to make some birdies. Well, a good four at the 17th, though, for Ells. He'll remain at 11 under par. Three under on his round today. To 15. We saw the picture of Tiger's mom, Cheetah. Somebody was speaking in Thai to her. She's from Thailand, and uh, she is world famous as well. And she had somebody following her, speaking to her in Thai all week. And she said, wait, I'm trying to watch my son here. Don't want to carry on a conversation. Tiger's parents so much a part of the champion that has uh, been molded and that we're watching do the incredible, win all four majors in four years. Earl, a retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army, Given the nickname Tiger from his Vietnamese soldier friend, Vuang Dong Phong. Earl gave that gentleman during the war that name and gave the same nickname to his son, Eldrick. Lean in like the ball is going to the right a little bit. But once again, for the third time in no four major player. championships, he's lapping the field. That's what's the incredible thing to me, is that he's not winning these things. He is running away with them, something nobody else has ever done in the history of this game. And it's got to be very frustrating for men like this. Think about how good David Duvall is and how good he will be for the next 10, 12, 15 years and really never really having the chance to be number one in the world. Talked about Tiger's parents, that mind so strong, in part instilled by his dad. Tommy Armour, PGA Tour player, said it's like a onesome. His mind is so organized. He's out there, he knows what he's going to do, and he does it. He leads by eight, and we're back with more final round coverage 
of the 129th British Open presented by MasterCard after this message and a word from your ABC station. You're watching the Open Championship on ABC Sports. Back out at 16 and David Toms with this long putt for birdie. this well this has been a wonderful open championship for David Toms first time he's ever been exempt in all the majors and he's taking advantage of it here back at 15 Tiger second look at that score minus 20 <laughs> just in the rough good lie with the seven iron shot it way out to the right oh Catch it, Catch it. That's fun. You know what's fun? The whole green slopes from left to right. He's putting straight back up the hill from 25 feet. And you're leading by eight. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that, but they still work hard to the bitter end. The difference maker. 18, Ernie Eltz at 11 under. Gary, we talked about David Duval and the frustrations in the last group of almost a match play situation and the body language changing. Have you noticed body language changing with Ernie at all? Yes, definitely, especially when he finished the loop. He knew he had some clear chances there to make some birdies and really didn't do that. And he's hit the ball very well, but just hasn't made any putts today. That was a sand wedge from 60 yards, trying to run it low. And that's sort of the story of his day. Disappearing back into the Valley of Sin. And coming back into view. It's a benign hole, but for the Valley of Sin and the aura of the history of golf at the home of golf. And you've never seen a setting like this if you haven't been here for an open at St. Andrews. They're nine deep out on the streets today. Just trying to get their little place to take a snapshot of history, whether with cameras or with their mind's eye. All the seats and the bleachers are full. They're hanging out on rooftops and rafters. Looks like Wrigley Field in some, pl some places here over to the right. Any place you can get a view. So many people, record number of people here this week. Just want to say they were there when history was made yet again at the home of golf. 16. Thomas Bjorn, the young Dane who has played so well this summer. Finds himself tied with Ernie Els at 11 under in third place to 15. Duval second. Right across the fairway from where Tiger played his second. Seven iron also. Back at 18 and Ernie. <laughs> Depending on what happens with David Duval, who's currently one ahead, else may become the first man to finish second in three consecutive majors. VJ winning the Masters. Tiger, the U.S. Open and the British Open. And let's not forget two-time U.S. Open winner. Absolutely. Road hole, 17. And on the tee, Lauren Roberts. Winner last week in Milwaukee. Lauren has played beautiful golf today. Really hasn't putted like he usually does. That's perfect, Rossi. Perfectly down the right side. Great angle in. Lauren Roberts at 10 under par for the tournament. Just one under for the round. Back to 15. And Tiger's on the green. Uh, Rossi, while you're out there, I know you're with Lauren Roberts, but you're watching and listening and you've seen peaks of Tiger and we talked about it and you've seen as much golf as any one on our illustrious team. Do you ever think you'd see 20 under par in a major? No, I, I really didn't, Mike. Although this week, uh, you know, was the week it could have been done. He, he, he's putted for so many eagles. Uh, you know, the only two bogeys he's made were three putts. And that's, that's just unbelievable. Uh, it's, uh, to me, it's... Uh, 
it's a staggering score and uh, a staggering amount uh, of strokes uh, to win by. And remember what we talked about all week. Stay out of the bunkers if you want to have a good week here. How many bunkers has Mr. Woods been in? Zero. This putt for birdie. sit here for 10 hours and talk about chasing Jack and the future and how far it will go and how great it can get but we should just enjoy what we saw at Pebble and what we're watching here at least for today <laughs> 20 under leads by eight three to go coming up next on ABC Sports we send you to the Irish Hills of Michigan Brooklyn Michigan for the Michigan 500 Champ cars take you around the Oval at Michigan next on ABC Sports. Back at 18, Ernie Eltz for three under par round of 69. Yeah, when I was talking a moment ago about David DeBall being frustrated on possibly never being able to be number one, Ernie Eltz is right in that category, and Phil Mickelson and Colin Montgomery and Lee Westwood, you know, all the guys in their late 20s and early 30s who dreamt about being the best in the world, it's going to be tough. They have a huge, huge mountain to climb. His goal for 2000 is to contend in the majors. Second, second, and right now third. He wants to win them, but he has accomplished some of his goal. Back at the 15th, Duval. So David will have that coming back for par. The remarkable physical makeover he's done twice in his career in unbelievable shape is David Duval, and we talk about the future of golf and talent in Woods and Duval. Look at these two guys, and they are excellent athletes as well. Swing coaches, sports psychologists, physical fitness every day. Now wait as long as you keep your flexibility. Uh, I don't think they've left any stone unturned, especially David Duvall and Tiger and, and some of the other young guns who uh, know they have to keep pace with all the other young ones coming up. They don't just go in there and pump iron. They work on golf muscles, on the stomach, the extension, and things like that, so they're strong in the right places. He works on everything, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> Before they tee at 16, let's send you over to 17. And Thomas Bjorn on the tee here at the road hole. Firing it straight over the center of the railway sheds there. The, the old course hotel on the right-hand side, and that's the perfect place to be. Right in the mayor's office, center of the fairway. Good angle of approach. And from there, that's what he has left. Still disaster can await as it is with Tom Watson back in 1984 when he stood on that tee at 11 under par, the same as Seve Ballesteros, and shot it right onto the road and made bogey as Seve birdied the last and went on to win. Wonderful hole. Really is a par four and a half to 16. You know, there's a remarkable similarity to the way Tiger's playing this last round here and what he did at Pebble. He had a huge lead, and it didn't bother him that anybody took a run at him. He played his game. He's played the same shots today that he played in the first round. He's not taken any unnecessary chances. And it has been this game plan that he has followed to perfection. Sixteen years ago, Bob Rosberg saw an eight-year-old boy play golf in Northern California, and I came back and told me he thought he might have seen the best player ever. I think you could say that right now, Judy. You might be seeing the best player ever. Not the greatest champion yet, because he's going to have to prove that in the next 10 or 15 years. And certainly that's Jack Nicklaus with all of his majors and wins. But the best player for a short period of time that can do more with the ball, strength, maneuver the ball, try the shots, you might be looking at him right there. And now Duval. Oh, 
Well, as we watch Tiger Woods march toward destiny, there's this amazing calmness about his entire being, as though he knows he ought to be here. Thanks, Mike. As we look down from high above these huge grandstands on the right-hand side of 17, Lauren Roberts putting for a par. How did he get to here, Rossi? Well, he played well short of the green, Ian. I, I think he took a, a club to try and play short of the green. Hit what looked like a wonderful pitch, and it just kept rolling. I think the players that have played here many times before, or maybe in the Dunhill Cups, realize that where this hole is today, you need to go long or long left. Even over on the 18th tee is not bad. But playing short today is not the way to go. Just after 1 o'clock back on the East Coast, 10 a.m. on the West Coast, and it's been a breakfast or a brunch to remember, a British Open to remember. Tiger Woods reaching 20 under par, a number in relation to par we've never seen in major championship golf. He leads David Duval by eight on his way into the British Open record book and the record book of golf as just the fifth person to win all four majors in his career. Let's go back to the 16th. And Duval second. Wind is really cold now from the left and hurting. That's from 211 yards. It has got to fly and move right. And the ground tends to feed into the bunkers, but he got a little lucky there. He's just short. He has a nasty shot left for his third. Now, Tiger. Well, you can tell it's playing long. Um, he's got a five iron in his hand. 200 yards right to the hole. Oh! Taking it big left to right. Anything to the right is fine. It's long and right, but it's on terra firma, and it is fine. But we all know how hard Tiger has worked on his swing, and it was 15 months ago at Dallas on the practice tee that all of a sudden he said to himself, I have it. Reached into his bag and with his cell phone call, teacher Butch Harmon, and it was like some epiphany that finally he put all the elements of his swing together. And from Dallas to now, it has been the most incredible run of golf I think we have ever seen. We've talked earlier today how fundamentally perfect his swing is. His putting is the equal to his swing, and his course management may, be may be better than both. Two eighteen. Tom Lame in this putt for birdie, the '96 champ at Litham. He has had a bogey-free day, looking for one more birdie. It will end up 16 pars, two birdies, a third consecutive round of 70. Lehman alone in fifth at 10 under par. And he will look forward to the Open Championship in 2001, five years after his name was inscribed on the Claret Jug. He'll return to Royal Lickham in St. Anne's, Muirfield in 2002, Royal St. George's in 2003. Lehman defends where he won next year 17 now we're back in the fairway with Thomas Bjorn's second shot and the flag is placed right behind that very deep pot bunker if you hit a low hook you can get around it but it's tough to get it anywhere near the flag the best bet is to go as far left and long as you can down into that bottom right hand corner of your screen is ideal almost impossible from this range to get it close fly it all the way back there and be long I know that doesn't look so good from where you're sitting it's about 50 yards from the hole but it's the best angle of approach and a good chance of making a four Bjorn is 11 under par if he can make a par here and perhaps birdie the last he could find himself in second place in the open championship He's a winner. He's won four times before. He won the Saracen World Open.
strong man, six foot three. Back at 16. And Judy Rankin, who will be first to play? I believe David is going to play first, and um, he is um, circling this very difficult shot from the front. And all the way around it, he's going to have to run this ball pretty close up the left side right there at the edge of the bunker. Well, the victory clearly out of reach now. You play for pride. And for a player of David's caliber, I'm not sure that even second place is much consolation. After nine holes, he pulled within three, and it played so well, he could have even closed the gap more. But for a three-putt at five, and narrow misses for birdies at one and four, and it's like Tiger switched into another gear. It's a combination of David's bogeys at 12 and 13, and Woods birdies, and suddenly, Tiger's lead is now eight. Like Curtis is pointing out, a big swing from left, up the hill, down, and to the right. Not a bad play from there. And there's a... These folks will take back with them the memory of something very special this week. You have to wonder if... Wood's biggest challenge today might be himself, unlike what it was in Nicholas's day. In Nicholas's day, you know, there was a different caliber of players. He competed against Arnold Palmer, who had seven majors, Gary Player with nine, Trevino with six, Watson with eight. But among the players today, it's only those players under 40, Singh and Jansen, O'Meara, Olafable, Daly, those are the only two with multiple winners, and those have two each. While he practiced strokes, let me tell you that Mark O'Meara is now standing about 15 feet behind me on the hill watching this finish. He plays the game as if nothing is left to chance. It's just absolute total preparation. And as a courtesy, we'll let Duval putt first. All week long, we've talked about these record crowds for the Millennium Open. And the competition has done nothing to disappoint. Over 200,000 people be here for the four round championship total to watch the game's best player complete the Grand Slam. The look tells it all. That's the third drop shot now for David on this inward nine. Out in 32 to get to 14 under. And now bogeys at 12, 13, and 16. And Tiger Woods' lead is now nine. And Ernie Els, also at 11 under with Duval and Bjorn, has a chance to finish second for the third consecutive time this year.
as they make their way to 17. And we turn it over, how appropriately, to former British Open champion Ian Baker Finch. Thank you, Steve. This is an amazing turn of events. We're on the tee of perhaps the most famous hole in golf, the road hole of St Andrews, but really it, to me, it pales in insignificance to the significance of this moment, this 24-year-old about to capture his fourth leg of the modern Grand Slam and join immortality. He stands on the tee talking to Steve Williams, his caddy. I would suggest he'll be using a three wood. And this is a tough job to try and concentrate on what you have to do. Right over the railway sheds. You won't see it land. It's a familiar call from his caddy. Shot. That's a beauty, Tiger. He finds another fairway. Tiger Woods sits in the middle of the fairway at the 17th hole at 20 under par with a nine shot lead in the Open Championship at St Andrews. Duval yet to play leave you with this image. The home of golf, St. Andrews. You talk about sacred sod, 500 years the sport has been played here. These people know it, and this man knows the history of the sport. When he wanted Augusta, the first major winner of African or Asian heritage, as he put on the green jacket from past champ Nick Faldo. In 99, the PGA Championship at Medina, you could see the emotion rush out of Tiger. He saw a big lead whittled down to one, but he survived and showed the toughness of a champion last August. Last month at Pebble Beach, it was a walk in the park. It seemed like he played a different golf course. Finishing double digits under par. Nobody's ever done that for 72 holes in the United States Open. And all the pressure coming in this week, it all built up. Could he handle the moment? Would it be too much? The world was watching. Well, like every great athlete in every great sport before, not only has he stepped up to the moment, he's embraced it and challenged it and taken on the field. And every time they got close, it was one more shot. Tiger separated himself. And now he's just moments away from walking into history, the fifth to win all four Grand Slam events. He's in the fairway at 17 and back to Ian. No, you got you can putt from just keep on your target. You'll be alright. 72 front end, right? Very front, real front, that's right. About 200 yards to the flag. I would imagine this ball will be long and left. Two oh seven with a six on the hole right over the road bunker from his point of view. He's hit a very low shot. Trying to punch it down there left of the bunker, but I don't think he hit it far enough. And <laughs> that's not that it really matters when you're nine shots in front, but that isn't where he meant to be. To 18. And here at the last, David Toms, this putt for birdie. Confidence building week for David Toms. Good tournament for David Toms. Playing in the last group yesterday with Tiger, you always want to play against the best. You can't, you can't beat him unless you play against him. One and under both days, and he finishes tied with Tom Lehman for fifth. What a boost for him. Absolutely. 17. see that there's so much going on it's a difficult shot 
it's not just like 200 yards, five iron, knock it close. There's so many things can happen on this shot. There's Marco Mira down there watching. He's down there near the green looking back to where David and Tiger are playing from. Two-time major champion back in 98 when he won the Open at Royal Birkdale and also the Masters earlier that season. David Duvall just in the right rough and probably trying to consider whether this ball might fly a little bit farther from the lie. He's got a little grass under the ball. 182 yards to the hole. And the slope from the top of that bunker down to the hole is about four or five feet. So you can't just carry the bunker and expect to get it close. Uh, yeah. You've either got to play it short right yeah. or to the back of the green and putt back. Well, he took a five or six iron, put it back, and his stance kept it down. Right in the bunker. It's so hard to aim away from the flag in this situation. These guys are so good. They're so used to aiming at the flag, trying to get it close, trying to make birdie. It is so hard, as we see where David Duval's ball has finished up there in the road hole bunker, to aim away from the hole and just try and two-putt or chip and putt for a par. Huge crowd surrounding this 17th hole. Awaiting the Tiger. see in his face there that he was looking to see which shot will I play now do I go left and then come back up do I put it up onto the green and there's the engraver you think he's safe <laughs> safer than last year <laughs> safer than last year exactly yes. right the complete package clone somebody this would be the man to do it well the way he's looking in he is definitely going over to the right just get it on the surface somewhere has yet to hit it in a bunker this week putter in his hand he's going to take it to the right of the bunker and he was up on the green just trying to find um a little spot that he might like to take a run at a four from. We've seen so many people over the years putt into this bunker and then take many to get out. Back in 70, Doug Sanders made six here because he putted into the bunker. Tommy Nakajima in 78 putted in, took four to get out. Must play safe. Good safe shot. And you know what, Ian? He will not be in the bunker because there's no bunkers on the last hole. Exactly he's, right. <laughs> he's through this championship, no sand at all. And this is exactly what Tiger came here to do, to complete the Grand Slam, the modern Grand Slam. The Masters, the US Open, the British Open, and the PGA make up. And he will be the youngest to do it at the age of 24, two years younger than Jack Nicklaus was. 1966 he completed the same now with our sand cam in the bunker here David Duval trying to figure out which way he'll go I don't think he can get this out if he goes where he's looking Curtis he'd love to get this up and down make par have chance of birdieing the last finishing second I mean that in his mind he feels like he's already thrown away his chance of winning but Still mean a lot to him if he could finish second. To 18. 
Thomas Bjorn has lost the red vest, gone to the blue sweater. Made par and will tie with Ernie Elts at 11 under, 277 total. From a nation of 5 million, Denmark and a nation of 5 million, Scotland. Denmark's greatest golfer of all time, Bjorn, will finish tied for second, his best major. I don't think he's really thinking about getting up and down. I think he's thinking about getting it out. Oh. Just You just can't get it up that quickly. To put it in perspective, the wall of that bunker is over six foot high. I can stand in there. I'm 6'4", can't see the top level, so that's how deep it is. That's rolled back another foot or so further away. He may have another go at it and see if he can get it out this time so hard to get it up so abruptly. Hold there, Marshall, please. Almost. It's the wall on the way up. And it comes back in. Fortunately, it didn't come back in his divot or his footprints. Can I smooth my footprints out? Just asking. John. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just asking if he can smooth out his footprints. He could have done it in the middle of his shot. Could have smoothed them out with his feet. Obviously can't touch the sand. But uh, obviously can't do it after the shot. Oh. Now that buried, he's going to have to come back. The road hole bunker. You hate to see it. Davis Duvall's name will go to the list of victims over the years. And now it's buried as well. I think I'm just trying to bring it back into that center, so right about there. He would be feeling absolutely sick right now. What more can go wrong? And he can't. Remember Sergio Garcia yesterday went at it with a putter. He can't do it because the ball came back in plug. He doesn't have enough of a backswing to chip it back. This is not good. He just, I mean, I don't know how he's going to go out. He's going, you saw him kind of take the club up kind of backwards, maybe chop that on it like this. Well, he's taken three in the bunker. That's five now. Take time to readjust and clean the club off. I mean, you'd just be feeling so bad. Tiger and Steve and Greg Reader. David's caddy will be feeling terrible. He's going to have to play out to the side now. Okay. Lucky to get that one out. That's six. And it's not the money situation right now. Of course, they're playing for huge amounts of money, but this is a major championship. He, uh, it's more pride. It's, you get to a point where you're embarrassed. You're playing yep. with a champion. You're playing in front of all these people, and you put it in a situation like yep. that, and you, you just, between a rock and a hard place. You're humiliated, embarrassed in front of a huge stage, in front of the world stage, and we feel for you, David. Mark O'Meara there with his wife, Alicia. Joanna, there in front. Tiger's girlfriend, his mother, his trainer. He has a wonderful support group. He's got good people around him. Tiger, good family, good friends. A nice young man himself, good person to be around. Deserves it, hard worker. 
practice for a fall. Tiger Woods will make five here at the 17th and drop back to 19 under par. He'll take an eight-shot lead to the final hole. Twenty-two birdies, forty-six pars, three bogeys. He bogeyed seventeen twice yesterday and today. The only other bogey on the card was the second yesterday. Quadruple bogey eight. Bob Tway had a nine here earlier in the week. That's the highest score on this hole in the 2000 championship. There has been a lot higher over the years. And as they walk off the 17th green here, teared up, crowds amassing. I'll pass it over to Mike Tirico and Curtis Strange and watch the final hole of the tournament. It is truly one of the best scenes and part of British Open history, the fans filling the 72nd hole fairway to watch the end. They're getting in position. If it's history, Tiger Woods knows about it. At home in Florida, he has a video collection that would make Blockbuster proud. He has tapes of everything. Old British Opens, old U.S. Opens, old Masters. He's seen how putts break on certain holes. He's studied the history of the game. Has visited the museum behind the RNA Clubhouse. And now we tease off at the last, leading by eight. We all said for years that a young man's going to come along and be bigger, stronger, smarter than anybody else. We didn't know when it was going to happen. I actually thought he'd be 6'7", 6'8", tall to be able to create a lot of club head speed. But it turns out to be this man right here, Tiger Woods. He's not as big as that, but he does create incredible oh, club head speed. Get close together. And he is uh, he's something special. After you know, Duval's drive as the fans rush up, There'll be a moment as the two cross over the Swilkin Bridge. The scene of so many famous pictures. It's hard to find them in the group there as the thousands begin to fill the fairway and hop the three yards of the Swilkin Burn. A virtually out of control scene as Everyone moves forward for their spot for the moment in history. And security tries to keep the path clear for the players to come across. These record crowds, there were just too many people to maintain the crowd. As the players try to cross. You know, it's incredible, just to finish my thought a second ago, Mike, it's incredible that the Jack Nicklauses of the world and, and Tom Watson's uh, with eight majors and Arnold Palmer's that, you know, the best in the world. And then you had in basketball, who I thought were the best athletes in the world and or are the best athletes in the world. And you had a Michael Jordan all of a sudden come along and so much better than the next guy. The NHL, you were the best in the world. And all of a sudden, a Gretzky would come along and just destroy the record books. And now in golf, you have Tiger Woods, who is going to possibly destroy the record books. I thought, I said earlier this year that all the Nicholas's records were in jeopardy except the 18 major championships. I thought that was far removed from anything else, but I think now I changed my mind. I think that record is in jeopardy. We'll have to wait and see, but this man seems like he can do anything. He'll burst into view, and the crowd will cheer. And hundreds of flashbulbs popping from paparazzi to the public. T. 
Dumas. I think Mom will get some better photos than that, though. He'll work the yardage for the shot, go over the routine with Steve, but he is human. He can't help but have thoughts of the history. Gene Sarazen, the second man to win the Masters Tournament in Augusta, Georgia. Ben Hogan, his ninth and final major, completed the career Grand Slam. Gary Player, no one went around the world to play more golf than Gary Player. And Jack Nicklaus, uh, as we've said, the, uh, the best ever. 90, which is 60, very simply, Mike, another uh, gold over there is, uh, made or hit. He'll carry on from here. He won't think about the history too much of because he's going to go right here. from this gold to the next, to the next, to the next. He won't think a whole lot about it, I don't think, until years from now. It's like the shopping at the store. One more is crossed off after a couple more shots. Absolutely. And it's, and it's in the wind, so I like that one. I like that one. David Duval went from a tie for second to 11th right 84, now. Yeah. And it would be heartwarming to see him make birdie at the last. For him, I'm sure it would be hollow. Look at that breeze. 84 is our total. It's a good one. British Open. Not the first time it's happened at this British Open. If you don't follow golf on a regular basis, it's hard to explain the history of this spot right here. Tiger Woods is going to win his fourth career major as Butch Harmon hugs first Tiger's mom, then his girlfriend Joanna. He's going to do it in the place where the game started. 
We don't have that in baseball. We don't go back to Cooperstown to see moments or Springfield in basketball. So the symmetry of this just absolutely fits hand in glove with the way his career has been mapped out. Knowing the history of the game, understanding it, striving to achieve it and rewrite those history books. And he has. Again. Alec Harvey has been engraving the name on the Claret Jug for more than 30 years. The last thing he'll wait for is the final total. A belt used to go to the champion of the British Open that was retired in the late 1800s. When you talk the history of old Tom and young Tom Morris, they're the only ones to win the Open by more than eight. Mom is here to enjoy. You know, Earl Woods is watching with, I'm sure, a tear and filled with emotion as well. He'll hold three of the four major champs championships be the reigning champion in three of the four majors Hogan won three in a row in 53 Jack Nicklaus briefly had that title in an odd situation one year when the PGA was early before the Masters so in that stretch 71 72 Nicklaus won three of six majors played Tiger will have won three of the last four majors played That's the way the backside has gone for David. Got close at the loop, got within three, but couldn't keep it going. And again, the disastrous eight on the 17th hole. Mark Kalkovecki has joined Mark O'Mara, fellow PGA Tour players out to watch this bit of history. And Butch Harmon needs to be congratulated also. He has put a lot of time and effort in this young man. He's watched him grow as a player and as a person. And he's been a large part of his maturity.
15 under par. The total 2-6-9. Just more records for Tiger Woods. 19 under, the best score ever in the 26 Opens at St. Andrews. We'll hear from Tiger and more. Coverage of the 129th British Open, presented by MasterCard, after a word from your ABC station. You're watching the British Open on ABC. Stand by. We're going to take you to Brooklyn, Michigan. The Michigan 500 coming up next on ABC Sports. You will hear from Tiger Woods, the champion of this British Open, momentarily. But first, a look back. What a week. This memorable week, the week of the Millennium Open. The sport came home again this week, back to its roots to celebrate its history and to add to it. The place where it all began five centuries ago. All congregating on the North Sea to experience a landscape dominated by woods. Thursday, Tiger's eight starting pars had some wondering if the buildup may have been too much. But this was a champ merely feeling out his opponent. It was just a matter of time until the old course met the new star. Showing strength to handle expectations and the rare errant shot. 67 strokes after it started, you knew he'd be around for the finish. Day two started with a goodbye to one of those magical relationships. Great player, great venue. Jack Nicklaus and his 40 years at St. Andrews. Friday a farewell from the game's home to its greatest player. One last view of the RNA clubhouse, the Swilkin Bridge, and the Golden Bear waving to his adoring fans. Two eras were again at a crossroad. Where one had been, the other was going. There was no feeling out on this day. Tiger took charge, 32 on the front. A continuing show of his maturity. That power is not flaunted, just called upon when the moment fits. Finesse is the reason he stands above the rest. But this was not a foregone conclusion. You see, the sport's most recognizable names and faces spent 36 holes getting into position. It's a position that they're growing to know too well. It's a view they've seen before. On Saturday, a third round brought no wind and an open door. Open for a challenge to be mounted, and only the world's number two stepped through. The rest, they were faced with the old course, and the old course's famous problems. Still somehow, some way, someone continued to steer clear from them. His game with no weaknesses. A psyche with no fear of conquering challenges and history. And when the field seems to get close, he just seems to knock one close. On the day, his lead doubled from three to six. 18 holes from history. We all woke up feeling different Sunday as the tea time came about. Wood Tiger, sensing history, sensing the moment, rise to it again. David Duval was there to say, maybe not. Four under for his first seven. He closed within three could have gotten even closer but as the day started going in the other direction for him the claret jug came more into the sights of tiger woods at age 24 the history chase was another sunday of a methodical march conservative for the front nine letting it out on the second nine taking us to major sites we'd never seen before at 20 under par crossing the bridge to history the name tiger stands out above all yet again the history books will show Tiger Woods joining the other greats. Major Golf's greatest foursome. Today they had a fifth join up with them. The foursome's a fivesome for now. But this guy might just be playing through. Nineteen under par, a record in a major. Here's Tiger with Carl Ravage. Michael, thank you very much. And Tiger, we're in an environment where golf started. If you would, close your eyes for one second. And I mentioned the names Gene Sarazen, Gary Player, Ben Hogan, 
Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods. What are your thoughts? It's pretty special to be in such a elite company like that. And uh, I've been been very fortunate in my golfing career to have the success I've had. And uh, things have just gone my way. I've, I've worked very hard to achieve what I've achieved, but uh, you need to feel lucky breaks to go your way. Jack Nicholas said a golfer's career may not be complete until he wins at St. Andrews. You're only 24 years old. We know the career isn't nearly complete, yet the significance of winning here to you, what does it mean? Well, this is the home of golf. This is where uh, you always want to win. And if, as I said before the U.S. Open, is that if you want to win two, two championships on, on the, the ultimate venues, it would be Pebble Beach and then St. Andrews. And you know, I've, I've been very fortunate to, to win them both and, and, and have them both in the same year. And you know, things have, um, boy, it's just hard to believe things have just gone my way. You've won at Augusta, you've won at Pebble Beach, you've won here at St. Andrews. Your coach, Butch Herman, says you're about 75% of your abilities. Have we seen the best, in your opinion, from Tiger Woods yet? No, 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 no definitely not. And I'm going to keep working, I'm going to keep trying to get better, and I know there are a few things that I can, I can improve on, and I'm going to continue to try and work on those things and uh, turn some of my weaknesses into my strengths. Congratulations on the Grand Slam. Thanks, Carl. All right. Mike, he works at a different level, he plays at a different level. Back to you. Jack Nicholas said, Carl, if a golfer is going to be remembered, he must win the title at St. Andrews. When Jack won, he said, at last, it's my greatest dream come true. Tigers made a dream become reality today. He will accept the claret jug at the presentation that comes up, and we will show you that during the Michigan, Michigan 500, which is coming up next on ABC Sports. We'll also see you for a recap at 5 p.m. Eastern as soon as the race is done. Now for Carl Ravitch, Frank Hannigan, Gary Smith, Judy Rankin, Bob Rosberg, Peter Alice, Ian Baker Finch, Steve Melnick, Curtis Strange, and our host Jim McKay, Mike Tirico. Thank you for being a part of a special moment. The 40th British Open on ABC, Tiger Woods into history, winner of the career Grand Slam. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.